Good morning. Good morning. Court starts early and I'm very happy to get to roll up in a hoodie uh, because that never used to happen. I haven't even put my earrings on yet, y'all. When I tell you court starts early, we are here this morning. I'm going to put these on while I roll the intro in just a minute. We're here this morning for the sentencing hearing for Daryl Brooks. It's slated to be a day and a half of hearings. Why are there this many hearings? Because it's the opportunity for there to be impact statements and statements in mitigation. Impact statements coming from surviving victims of those that were injured, family members of those that were killed. The DAs have an opportunity to make a statement and ask for a certain sentence. I imagine that in this case, the DA's statements will be a bit restrained and limited. Um, then Daryl Brooks will have an opportunity to make a statement, and he has the opportunity to present people on his behalf to try to mitigate the sentence. In all reality and practicality, he is still facing 800 years plus, plus multiple life sentences. He will never be outside of prison again. However, this is an opportunity for those who were harmed by him, not just to express that to him, to the community and to the court. There were so many people impacted by this. It is going to be a long day. It is a difficult day. I have sat through many a victim impact statement. I have read out loud victim impact statements that were were typed and written uh, in my time as a district attorney. It is a very difficult thing. I hope it brings closure for those that are impacted. I hope very much today, this is my hope, that Daryl Brooks hears what they are saying and, and just does not um, argue back with them. And that's going to be, that's going to be the thing, isn't it? He seemed throughout this trial to have argued back with the judge, but when the jury was in the room to be rather restrained, I'm very much hoping that that will be the case today. Let's just hope. Let's just hope. We can finger cross. Let's just hope. Um, this is going to be a long day. So he's already sitting in court. The court starts at 830. The judge will ask people if they have motions and what, what have you. Um, Terry is asking, they haven't sentenced him yet. No, this is this this trial has been so fast. This has been so fast. This is within a year of what's happened, which in a mass killing like this is unique um, that this has moved this fast. But no, he has not been sentenced yet because he will have the opportunity to be heard and the victims have an opportunity to be heard. And it would have taken them some time to be ready and get to court the day that the verdict came down. So the court put this over a week and a bit to do that. And for all of you waiting to get Taylor Swift tickets, uh, Godspeed. I think the court is coming in. So let's go to the court feed real quick. And then we will roll the intro. The court says, I'm starting in a minute and 15 seconds. My intro is shorter than that. <laughs> So let's roll it. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. All right. So we're going to go to that court feed. I appreciate that the judge came out and said, we're starting in like a minute. They're going to start right at 830. This judge has been uh, punctual, though the stuff with Daryl Brooks has leaned into not always being timely. So the he has been the one that has taken quite a bit of time. So since the court is starting right at 830, I want to make sure that we are up. He is sitting in court in his jail jumpsuit um, or jail t-shirt. He seems to be handcuffed um, at the wrists. He has the Bible. We've got uh, bailiff, bailiff poker face back there ready to go for the day. And the court is calling the case. Oh, my God. I can't hear anything. Hold on. Good morning, Judge. Sue Apper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wachow appearing for the state. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr., um, oh. I'm here for this matter by special appearance. That's your name now. My uh, intention to bring any controversy to you, Your Honor, or your court today. Um, I'm wondering how I may so settle this matter. It's um, going to be settled. You're going to get sentenced. Is there anyone here in the court that can give me a rendering of the account? Um, 
Please. He went by his name now. Here it says noted. He went by Daryl Brooks. Be responding to that last question, we are here today to start the sentencing hearing in this case. Uh, this, of course, following your conviction on all counts following the jury trial that concluded um, in late October. I will acknowledge, sir, there are a number of documents you filed today. One is a motion for stay pending appeal. There are two ICFs that came in as well. Both yeah, I'm shocked it's his name. Me. The volume is so low on the court's end. One related to court costs and fees, requesting a copy of the record at the court's expense. That's the max. And then the other one also requesting a certified copy of the record written and recorded uh, statement that you're waiving all fees and court costs and that you would be appearing by special appearance. Um, yeah, this is the max. We're not gonna take these up initially, sir. Um, in order for a court to consider a motion for stay pending appeal, the matter must be finally adjudicated, uh, including uh, the signing of a judgment of conviction. There we go. Uh, once that is done, I will schedule the motion for stay pending appeal accordingly. That way the state can also have proper notice of that and be prepared to address that with the court in terms of your request to waive costs and fees. Um, I will interpret your written ICFs as a request that at sentencing I waive costs associated with these convictions to the extent that is allowable under the law. As far as the record is concerned, this court is not the custodian. As far as the anything in the written record or the file, the clerk of court is the custodian as far as the uh, official transcripts of the proceedings, uh, those will need to be prepared. Which they need uh, and there for are appeals. there costs associated with that, and there is a form that you or a lawyer acting on your behalf would need to file in order for this court to consider that. Uh, so I'll take all of that under advisement, but will not be addressing that specifically other than what I have just noted. Michelle, it's a special appearance because those are the words he wants to say. He wants to say it. Uh, That's why. I hear from individuals who are here to make statements is the That's letter all. that I sent to the parties. Oh, the judge um, sent a letter. Yesterday. What did you say? It does address one topic that I wanted to address at the beginning of the hearing today. And She's that is at him. your request for individuals to speak at sentencing did not contain a request that they appear by Zoom. And I wanted to clarify that oh. with you, sir, if you were requesting that they appear by Zoom and make That's their statements for. if they're not present in the courtroom on your behalf when the appropriate time comes. Um, yes, um, I, I apologize for that, Your Honor. I didn't know that. She told you at the it, end of the hearing. Was it some type of... Uh, she told you at the end of the last step hearing. that I was supposed to include in that to make sure yep. that they would appear by Zoom. I'm a little confused, so I, I apologize yep. for Sir, that. Sir, I don't know Ask where any lawyer. of these individuals live, whether they are local and can make it here or not. Should have asked um, your lawyer. And I had anticipated that either of the parties, if there was a request for someone she to told appear you that. by Zoom, that would be specifically made so that I could then take the appropriate steps. She said there they is could. Time. My intention would be that when uh, the state has rested their portion of the sentencing hearing. All of their speakers have spoken and they have given their sentencing argument uh, that I would, uh, depending on where it's at, probably take a break, start up the Zoom at that point, allow the individuals who wish Sheila, to Sheila, I give commentary. Uh, long crime is streaming so this without commentary time, if you want to go watch it there. Otherwise, I wasn't going to keep the Zoom up because the proceedings are being live streamed. Right. So um, they needed the information for the Zoom so that, that individuals you, could sir? just get the zoom uh, link and she in, said in part, uh, that had to be in by friday so I'm, I'm still a little confused on uh she told you it had to be in by friday get the uh zoom link to those who wish to speak on you my were behalf. supposed my to turn all that in by friday has contact the clerk of court's office um i haven't addressed that in any way but i would then give my staff permission to reach out to her i believe she has left her phone number and we could do that and provide that Zoom information to her. And I presume she would be able to get it to the individuals on your list. It's very important, though, that only those individuals yes, that's why she appear wanted it. on the Zoom. That's the only people I will approve. Um, that's why she wanted a list court, of course. by Friday. Uh, and then the other she parameters didn't want are that 
um, that individuals who are on the Zoom for that portion Time of the sentencing coffee. hearing keep their microphones off, their cameras off until they are making a statement and they have to be identified with uh, obviously the name that was provided by you and only those individuals. What I don't want to see is, you know, one person and then 10 people behind them. That's not what I approved. Nina, so, he may have have so missed this because he had that, just sir. been convicted. Uh, I have a quick question about he that. He might have right. missed right. it because of that. One of the, That's um, why you have a lawyer. People that wish to I feel speak strongly on about my it. behalf would be you know, the mother and my youngest daughter. And Don't do that to your kid, man. I'm not sure when exactly she'll be speaking. And it, it's a chance that she would actually have my daughter with her. With that. How old is your daughter? She's eight. God. As long as the child is remains quiet and doesn't interrupt, I will allow that one exception. Okay, thank you. All right, so I will instruct uh, Madam Clerk to let uh, my other clerk know that the Zoom information can be released uh, to your mom. There's a meeting ID and passcode, uh, and that can be provided to the other individuals on the list. Mm. And uh, Ashley, I wish I was anticipate that that won't be until sometime. I'm going to have to resell, but we are officially this of the sentencing. Hearing. This chat is here for sentencing. If We're also a Taylor had, Swift um, ticket support group. Because I know my grandmother would like to speak, and she's very elderly. So if she has any, um, if grandma rolls up here and is like, like 60, I'm going to just will someone. She should be in court. Be, have, be able to walk her through that. No. Well, I assume she. That's might what be your lawyer's that for. That yeah. Be available. She's eighty, so I don't. Okay, at least she's. You know. She's. Well, I, I know that she's not the most. I trust they will have sad. it all figured out, sir. So, all right. Sir. Sir. All right then. Is there if you had a lawyer, they could do it from the law firm. To address preliminarily before I turn to the state. Yes, Your Honor, I do have a few preliminary matters, please. Okay. Uh, the filings that you just referenced from Mr. Brooks, I did not see those in the electronic queue this morning. Oh, they don't have uh, it. Would it be possible for the state to get copies, please? Yes, they I believe were hand delivered. Or Zach may be, Mother Clerk Zach may be doing that right now. We'll make sure, but Teresa can make copies for you. And his well. grandmother okay. can. I think it's fair that his I grandmother also wanted to ask asks a, for him a to get housekeeping treatment. Housekeeping matters, Your Honor, as far as uh, timing and scheduling. Ooh, scheduling. If we complete the hearing today, then I assume that eliminates the need for the hearing tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes. Or do you see a, a version where we come back tomorrow no matter what? Did you see a version where we come back tomorrow? No matter, no matter what. what I, <laughs> She's I not want to be able to digest sentence. the statements from everyone. She's not sentencing him today. Um, okay, good to know. And process them accordingly. There's going to be quite a few for both She's sides. And I think today. it's appropriate that I take the overnight to do that and come back tomorrow to render okay. the sentence. Okay, thank you. That That's very helpful. Um, All right, the we'll other, be here tomorrow. Uh, question is, we have the easel uh, back in the courtroom. Some people did want to display some foam boards. Um, Those are going to be pictures it, of the it deceased, the most likely. Approval. We'll leave it at this location and then just uh, pass up the uh, exhibits and Detective Raglan can display them if that's okay with the court. Well, it's certainly like Mr. Brooks to be able to see them as well. Um, Mr. He should. Brooks, are you able to see the easel from where you are? Otherwise, I could have it put in the witness stand too. Yeah, put it, and put it in the witness box Detective so he Raglan can see. Just, sure. Uh, kind of facilitate that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Put it in the witness that box so he and can then see. Other individuals have brought um, digital photographs that will be displayed. Good morning, Brian. Um, so we'll need your clerk's assistance with Shemika, that. And the again, Zoom we'll is for people who couldn't Ms. travel the back table so that, that those who wanted Thank to speak you. on his behalf, even right. if they couldn't Anything travel, had access to the court. This morning. It's the court being very right. fair. Just really quick. Um, to let people zoom in their statements in support. Very quick reference to. Um, or the victim impact statements. The ICS. Um, I did address. Uh, ICF to the his clerk, inmate communication uh, clerk form. of courts in regards. If this to, is about you uh, showering, I don't want to hear it. The record. So I did. Oh, I that's did, about um, your appeal. I should have mentioned that when you was talking about it, but I did. Uh, actually, I addressed it to her um, personally. <sighs> to who personally? I trust she'll respond in due course then. Ms. Artemis Fowl, the else? victim impact statements are going to be today. Not at this time, yeah. All right. I will note that it appears yesterday some restitution Make sure information you, uh, was get filed. Get your Kleenexes. Uh, was that uh, 
hand delivered to my Mr. husband Brooks. got me a pretty box of Kleenex today. I also have emotional support candles. Information. Was that hand delivered to Mr. Brooks? Yes. And Everything Kat. we filed yesterday was provided to Mr. Brooks personally in the jail, Your Honor. I object to that, Your Honor. Um, there Great. were a number of documents that I did not accept. Inmate communication form. It doesn't matter if you accepted them, they were delivered to you. You don't have well, to accept mainly, it. Print them off. So you don't, you don't have to request emotionally accept it. School district uh, totaling. These are restitution documents. That's just one piece of it. Let me look at the letter again. There's a letter from the state and then our um, crime victim compensation request as well. The state will be requesting $47,193.29 to EMC Insurance Company on behalf of the school district of Waukesha and additionally requesting $124,000. $220.65 to crime victim compensation. Um, that's the program through the Department of Justice. And supporting documentation, uh, I believe, was also filed. Let me just look for that. So this restitution is going to be hundreds of thousands. How does restitution work if you can't pay? And we'll have it printed off. His it was delivered to him yesterday. Whether he accepted it or not, I don't know, but it's available to him. In his the wages, if he works right, in custody, can be right, garnished. Just for the record. Madam Clerk will print it off and you'll have it um, I don't, shortly. I don't know if they, where they put it after I didn't. And, yeah, and the it, reason why it basically I, I doesn't want to matter state though. this for the record, the reason why I didn't is because I didn't know what it was. When, it came, lawyer. when it came to my um, cell, I was sleeping, so I was oh, just like. Oh, so you like, did get it? Ah, whatever, I'm not getting it. Uh, facts, okay. So Thanks for telling like the truth. A, I was like, ah, whatever. Exchange or anything like that. It was just like, hey, we got some mail. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not. And he was like, all right. All right. What, well, what do you expect? For the record, but again, a personal it is being invitation to, to pay you restitution? This morning, um, and you'll be able to review that as you see fit. Sir. All right. Then, Attorney Opper, one last question from the court. Do you anticipate making your sentencing recommendation at the conclusion of all no, of at the, the other beginning. statements being made? Make it at yes. the beginning. Oh. All right. With that, then um, you may commence. All right, thank you, Your Honor, and I appreciate and that. Now we're getting I into do victim intend to just statements. make some very brief preliminary statements to the court, and then uh, commence with the uh, individuals who are present and have asked to speak. I just want to um, state again, for the record, we have organized the individuals who want to provide a verbal statement to the court into three or four groups. Um, I think we're. We're at three, we're at four. Okay, we're at four groups. Um, we have the first group present in the courtroom, Your Honor, and uh, along with their support persons and family members and things like that. Um, we will uh, go through the first group and then request that brief break to uh, trade out the groups if that's agreeable to the court. I just want Emma, the court to be you. aware uh, and state something that's maybe obvious, but maybe not. I appreciate that. Thank you for the kind support. The people chat. that are speaking to this court are direct victims of this crime. They were uh, either charged individuals or uh, representatives of the groups, such as the Blazers or the bank or, or the dancing whatever. Grannies. You're very familiar with these groups now after having gone through trial. These are people uh, with a, you know, a direct link to either someone that was hurt or injured or killed. Um, that's who we're presenting to you today. Obviously, there could have been thousands of people um, that would want to share with this court their thoughts, impressions, and the impact that this crime had on them. We did not turn anyone away, but some individuals did contact our office and express hey friend, a desire you. to contact the court, or I'm sorry, to speak to the court. We directed them to write the court a letter if they felt it was appropriate. I that don't would know be if members the court of the received community. any such um, written materials. That, we also provided fair. some written impact statements on behalf of our charged victims. I know the court the has office can't facilitate has, uh, everyone that was at the parade who was impacted. Um, and those can go to the court, that's so fair. I don't wanna spend a lot of time with my thoughts and impressions right now because I think what's really um, most important for is for this court to hear from these families. And the reason I say that is you know, Judge, that at trial, um, we asked some cursory questions about 
the injuries that were received and the impact that these crimes had on oh, the dear. individuals that were directly involved. But we didn't spend a lot of time on that. And I think um, this court is really going to be astounded to hear the level of injury that oh, many dear. of these That's uh, going people to be very suffered. Hard. Many children suffered the impact, the life-changing impact it's had on them. So this will be different and in new information than what they we do. presented at trial. And I think and it's very relevant and important for your honor to consider um, when you're um, I'm just going to make uh, a note. Deciding on a fair and appropriate sentence and knowing the gravity make of the note. crime, the seriousness of the situation, okay and the impact that it had on the to community. To walk away. To hear from these you families to walk directly away. as to what they it's went okay through. It's okay to take a break. And again, um, this was touched on at trial as far as the physical injury versus the emotional injury and the trauma that has been suffered. So it's okay um, to take a break. I think um, that will be important as well for this court to appreciate. Uh, this defendant's conduct. The DA is in part we'll past the guilty uh, finding. The defendant He's been convicted. Why now it's time to happening. talk about what exactly his conduct did the to our community. The court doesn't need to, to be educated. Families. So the court knows. Um, these uh, speakers are grouped, not necessarily within um, the groups as they march down the street, but there is some logic to. Um, I brought tissues. So we're not going to bounce all over the place. Is I have what I'm trying to class. say. We'll, we'll try and uh, clump them together uh, to make the most uh, yes, sense I to have the court. Seen, and um, um, with judges the court's permission. We have a set lineup. It's of very course, hard. Uh, we may need to um, be a little bit fluid depending on somebody's uh, emotional, emotional state, state. or. Um, desire to speak when it's their appointed turn. There are some individuals that have said they're going to try and read their statement to the court, but they may not be able to get through it, in which case I believe Jen Dunn will um, step in and, which is and read very the hard to do. remainder of the statement for them. People find incredible strength in these. Thank you. Um, um, I also have a sponsor today. Please confirm on the record that the state has complied with victim rights. So yes, we are we going to roll that, that in just Honor. a moment. Thank you. And then please give the court a heads up when a juvenile is next yes. so that uh, the, the court cameras can take the appropriate steps as well. And yes, so the court absolutely. Can and for the record, we did provide herself. a list to the uh, cameramen from court TV or uh, Good. individuals from court TV and Good. Uh, we're trying to assist them in that regard as well. We want to thank them again um, for their uh, Props to court high TV. degree of concern for obeying uh, the court's order and their respect and uh, uh, intention to strictly adhere to uh, maintaining the privacy rights of these victims. So good job, Court TV. Been, uh, absolutely very professional in that regard, Your Honor. Thank you. And then just lastly, because I would like to keep track and. Obviously, I will honor however they want to introduce themselves, but if you could also tell me which victim they relate to, if it's not self-evident, sure. that would be great as well, and I'm going to keep a list. Okay. Right, Thank you. Ahead. Okay. So All right, they're going to call. We're going to. Lori Loken. In between statements, I do have a sponsor please, uh, that was set for today before this was set, and we will do that in between the, the next speakers. <clears throat> Um, he, I hope, sits yeah, here and just listens. It pleases the court, Your Honor. One of my staff will actually go let Court TV know when a minor is coming next. Thank you. I would appreciate that. All right. Sure. And uh, are you going to say the victim that you relate to, or I can tell the court this is for victim you, you? Thank you. Okay. Well, we've just told the court. Good morning, Thank you for being here. Good morning. I'm addressing the court. Is the microphone on? Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm addressing the court, but I also want to direct my comments to Daryl Brooks, Jr. My name is Lori Locken. I was walking with the Catholic community of Waukesha, my church family. We were celebrating the joy of the season in preparation for the birth of Jesus when you made your decision to drive through the parade route. It truly amazes me that you deny your accountability for the damage and hurt that you have willfully caused. In the years ahead, There's no I urge you to carefully consider the sorrow and grief of the Waukesha community and the world at large. Ponder the loss of lives within our families, 
the physical and emotional injuries that may never heal, and the sense of personal safety that you robbed from us. Yep. As for me, you never gave me a chance. I turned around and it was only seconds before you hit me square on. I clearly remember feeling the impact. The searing pain of that blow oh, that is face. as clear to me today as it was a year ago. Oh, my, my own anger. Since then, I'm healing as best as I can from the physical injuries. But you took away my peace and my trust. Yeah. Something that I will never regain. My prayer for you is that you will find your salvation in the midst of this evil. I hope that you will repent for the heartache you have caused so many. I too pray that your own personal wounds that you have sustained through your life, which has created so many demons in you, will be healed through this action. And the court's going to look at Thank how you. Brooks responds too. They're not just looking at the court's not just looking at the victims making statements. They're also Thank going the to look at how for Brooks this opportunity. responds. Uh, I am Bill Mitchell, formerly known as Victim ZZ. To you, Mr. Brooks, I'm charged 52. Um, on November 21st, uh, 2021, I was marching with the Catholic community of Waukesha and the Waukesha Christmas Parade. I was walking in the back and I noticed our banner was flying up because of the wind. So I went up the hole down the middle with, uh, uh, so people could read it. I was joined by a priest uh, who helped hold it down. Uh, we walked almost the entire joyful parade route. When uh, something caught my attention, I turned around and saw a headlight. Uh, and then I was hit. I didn't see the driver and I didn't see the type of vehicle. I flew over the hood and ended up on the ground with eight broken ribs, bruised lung, fractured hand, finger, and my face was slashed open in several places requiring stitches. Strangers and friends came to my aid as they lay bleeding in the street. I spent three nights in an ICU. Recovery was slow. My hand still has painful cramps that freeze in my fingers. But I know I was lucky. Others had a lot worse injuries and six died. The impact on my family was great. My wife was home recuperating from surgery when she received the call that was hurt badly and on the way to a hospital trauma center. Not able to drive yet, she had to wait for my son and his fiance to pick her up and drive her to Oconomowoc. Not a call you ever And after want. I was released, she had to do a 180 from patient to be my nurse and help me in even the most basic tasks. The stress had slowed her recovery. The continuing pain was a major factor on me giving up a part-time job I enjoyed. We had to rely on family and friends for transportation to doctors for follow-up care for months. Neighbors pitched in to do my yard work and snow removal. Youth from the neighborhood decorated the inside of our house for Christmas. This crime had a ripple effect throughout the community. I do want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your diligence and sacrifice to be here. I tell people I was blessed because I didn't see the carnage that night. I just saw people helping me. But the jury and all of you had to watch the entire awful scene on videos and hear detailed reports of what happened. I'm sure that's going to stay with all of you. <clears throat> I wanted to thank the judge for her patience and knowledge, the police, Detective Casey, for their thorough investigation and quick arrest, the prosecution for presenting such a strong case. A special thank you to Jen Dunn, Carrie, and the entire victim's assistance team that informed, comforted, and listened to the many people impacted by this tragic event. Finally, I can't bring myself to thank the defendant, but the response to the evil act he did shined a spotlight on how strong, supportive, and loving community we live in. Many people and organizations stepped up to help me. Family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, first responders, Aurora, doctors, nurses, my church family, the Catholic Community of Waukesha, Knights of Columbus, AOH, United for Waukesha Community Fund, Catholic Charities, and so many strangers offered support and prayers. The vast majority of people are good. Wow. It takes a lot of strength to come away from here's That's the it. goodness. Then there is Mr. Brooks. Here's he is a unique individual who can have a clear conscience after over, running over kids like speed bumps he and killing that in his six closing. people. I would suggest someone without a conscience. He said that. He doesn't ask for forgiveness. He doesn't admit to do anything wrong. It is never his fault. When he slapped a woman, it was her fault because she made him mad. I believe if he made it home that night with the red SUV, he would have told his mom the damage wasn't his fault. 
he was in a hurry and people didn't get out of his way. Some crazy old fat gray hair guy body slammed his hood. I didn't watch all the trial, but the parts I saw wow. that I saw showed Mr. Brooks had a lack of empathy for his victims yep. or remorse for his actions. I don't disagree. The only regrets he seemed to have is that he was caught in the impact on his own life. You read that accurately, Free, sir. He would probably not drive through another parade, but chances are someone so self-centered as Mr. Brooks will hurt other people again. The only life he seems to value is his own. I don't believe that Mr. Brooks will think about me or any of his victims ever. The feeling is mutual. I really don't think much about him now, but when the prison door closes on this felon, I won't think about him again. I do hope Mr. Brooks will use the Bible for more than a courtroom prop. He may want to start with the basics that I know his family had the, taught him, thou shall not kill. Is but on then point. I might want to read Galatians chapter six, verse seven. Oh, he's got suggestions for you, Mr. Your Brooks. Honor, Take them. Take I hope you give him the time to read and study the Bible. Mr. Brooks did everything he could to try it's to make the trial study. a circus. It is not a circus. It's not even about Mr. Brooks. Today, the court will hear what the trial is about, the victims. And as former Victor ZZ, I would ask the court for a sentence that keeps the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks Jr., away from society forever. Yep, Thank that's going to happen. <coughs> Kathy with the C asked if the jury is there. The jury is not here. The jury's job is done. The jury determines the facts in the case. The judge determines the sentence. So these will all be before the judge who will determine the sentence. Mr. Brooks, my name is Jason Peckloff, and I'm with the Catholic Community of Waukesha. I was one of the victims you hit with the SUV no. you were driving on The November judge can't 21st. force him to listen. What you did to my she can Catholic community admonish him if he and to the out. city of Waukesha show that you had no regard for life. What makes it more accurate. disappointing that it, you have shown no remorse for what you have done. Accurate. While you're sitting in prison, I no want you to reflect clap. what you have done. I want you to reflect yeah, that you nearly took my life. I almost lost the chance to see my wife and kids again. I may have never had the chance to love or hug them again. Yeah, he clapped. You intentionally harmed my community, whether it was physical or psychological. They can see the back of him because they're behind him in the courtroom. You stole our innocent that day. Before that tragedy you created, no, it was not. a beautiful day we all experienced and never thought an evil thing like this could ever happen at a parade. My friend, myself, and the Waukesha Catholic community were asking parishioners and their families to participate in this parade. Imagine the guilt we must all bear for the rest of our lives. It's not your fault, sir. His free because will of is not your, your actions. Fault. His free will is I was not out of fault. work for about six weeks. Then I had to go back part-time because of my sustained injuries. Because of your actions, the multiple lacerations you created leaked out of the bandages Baxter, and onto yes. my bed, comforter, and sheets. What an awful visual to have. Because of your actions, I could have lost my foot. Thank God my nurse friend was checking on me. Because of your actions, the judge is keeping my wife how cannot Brooks get asks. the images out of her mind of what you have done. You have forever scarred her. Because of he your actions, care. my wife had to hand over my children to our community friends to check on my lifeless body. Because of your actions, my children, four and six at the time, had to go with a grieving friend to find her own child that was in lockdown. It took a while for them to be reunited. Because of your actions, my children are scared to death when they had to cross the same street you drove down. They were bawling and begging me not to cross the street. Because of your actions, to reassure my children that, this, that it is safe at parades, not to feel 100% safe. There's no time limit on these statements. Most because of these have your moved actions. pretty quickly. Not all people in our community are ready to go back to the parades. Again, you stole that innocent from them. Because of your actions, my children are scared of sirens. Yeah. 
because of your actions. They were scared of red SUVs every time they saw one. They cried and hid. Because of your actions, I walked into the entrance of my children's school and felt like a triage unit. I saw children on crutches and a walker. What an awful image to be burned into my memory. Because of your actions, I feel terrible. I could not help my community and the city by testifying during the trial. Your cowardly actions did this. Your actions forced my family to seek out therapy and resolve in their minds what happened. Lots of therapy. PTSD needs therapy. All the therapy. We Your love therapy. actions made a second guess what we did that day. What could we have done differently? It's not your fault. During this trial, you show no remorse. Facts. It makes you look like a monster. It does, it During does. the trial, you show little regard and respect to the court. He's laughing. It makes you look disrespectful. He's laughing. Daryl Brooks is During the trial, laughing. you treated multiple witnesses terribly. You were trying to twist the words of our pastor, who is a man of the cloth. You made a comment to a witness you injured that he was walking fine now. He blamed it makes Jesus you in his a closing. a jerk. What? Oh, he called him a jerk. Despite what you have done to my community, I forgive you. Forgiveness does not it's remove the need for justice. Yeah, forgiveness is for you. Justice must be served and you must go to prison. My prayer is that forgiveness will heal your wounds and the wounds for the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He's la he is, he's been laughing. And the judge will be watching that. The judge will see his actions and will probably comment on them Morning, tomorrow. My name is Margaret Petulis, victim BBB, count 54. I know I am blessed to be here today to present my statement to the court. Daryl Brooks's choices on November 21st, 2021, took a toll mentally, physically, and emotionally How could it not? on me as well as affecting my family. I remember the moment someone yelled car and I turned to see a vehicle behind and to the right of me. Somebody had a card be like, wait, what? What is this vehicle yeah. doing here? Wait, what? That's After exactly that moment, right. I have a void in my memory. Oh, my mind God. will let me see what happened. I remember my thoughts. Oh my God, this can't be happening. Please, not my hip, not my leg. My next memory is laying, lying on the ground with a person from our group and a nurse talking to me and asking how I was. They worked on keeping me calm and from going into shock. I will always be grateful to them. Every night I would lay awake and replay the incident to see if I could get the memory back. Months of counseling and the passage of time have helped me be somewhat okay with not knowing what happened. One of my fears is that when I least expect the memory, at least expect it, the memory will return. Yeah, trauma does that. It's After super After being fucked. impacted by the vehicle, I was laying on the ground with severe pain to my left leg. Emergency people stopped by and one questioned whether I had been shot. And all I could think of is why would I have been shot? I was eventually lifted into a police SUV and taken to Waukesha Memorial Hospital. I was examined and was released after being diagnosed with a broken bone in my left foot. I was instructed to wear the boot provided by the hospital, sit in a recliner, keep my leg elevated, and not put any weight on my left foot. I was instructed to follow up with an orthopedic doctor the following week. I went home and found it very hard to get from the car into the house. I couldn't figure out how to walk without putting my left foot down on the ground. My stomach was nauseous from the pain medicine. My husband and daughter assisted me into the house and sat me in a chair. I immediately passed out and when I came to, my husband and daughter were concerned that I had had a stroke. They called 911 and I was transferred to Aurora Trauma Center. I was, was examined head to toe and again released with a diagnosis of a broken bone in my left foot. And no, we live in a trial most level of, and I was able to get to the lower level where there is a bedroom, a bathroom and a family room. To court. For the next six weeks, I would sit in the a recliner with my new. left leg elevated and ice packs applied. I also slept with a wedge that kept my leg elevated while I was sleeping. After experiencing more pain in my left leg, I was sent for an ultrasound, and the ultrasound found a hematoma on the inside of my left leg. 
Standing up was extremely painful, even without putting pressure on my left foot. It would take me a couple of times of standing and then sitting back down on the side of the bed until I could bring myself to hop on my right leg using a walker for balance to get to the bathroom or to the recliner. Natasha, no, his my husband had to help me to the judge in and out of bed due to the extreme pain in my lower left leg. It just shows I couldn't the judge dress has no or undress remorse. myself, take a shower, go to doctor's appointments, or to mass without his help. Every day he had to apply gauze wrap and an ace bandage to my left leg to cover the blisters so that they, as they would burst, they were covered. He then applied the boot sock and a boot. Every day for several weeks he had to prepare all meals and bring them down on a tray to me. We were fortunate that he was working from home during this time. The judge sees I his face more than the victims do. three rounds of physical therapy. I am still going through physical therapy. After the bone healed in my foot, I was still experiencing pain in my ankle. The pain limited me. I had trouble walking normally. Debbie, it's okay. You all need to take care of yourselves. Distance. Going up That's and down the stairs was to best take care sitting of you. on the stairs and going down that way. As time went on, I was frustrated that I could not perform the simple act of walking down the stairs. Before going to the third physical therapist, frustration set in as I thought I would always have pain and not be able to do all the things I enjoyed, such as pickleball, stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, walking miles, and traveling. My third round of physical therapy found that the whole left side of my body was twisted from the impact of the vehicle. After 10 and a half months and three rounds of physical therapy, I am now 95% back to normal. All the months of suffering and thinking no one would be able to figure out what was wrong, I was worried that the pain would remind me forever the choices Daryl Brooks made yeah. on November 21st, 2021. I wanted my life back. He was reading about it. During this time of feeling a healing, I felt isolated and frustrated that the Advent and the Christmas season were happening, and I was unable to decorate, shop, or participate as I usually would during the holidays. Emotionally, since being struck by the vehicle driven by Daryl Brooks, I have felt like a victim. Every day I was reminded that I was limited by physical pain and loss yeah. of self. The world went on, but I was stuck, not able to move forward. Today, I am taking the final step forward in my journey Good for of coming you. out the other side of this incident. Good for you. Life is starting to look like it was before November 21st, 2021. I know I am not the same person that I was before this trauma, but now I have an enhanced appreciation for life and a stronger sense of spirituality. I am grateful to have a supportive family, supportive friends, and my Catholic community of Waukesha who have all walked this road with me. Yeah. Forgiveness is a choice. I know that I can forgive you, Daryl Brooks, without forgetting the trauma you caused, without you apologizing and acknowledging your actions. This may take some time for me to accomplish, but after today, I will not let your actions take over my life. Good for you. I will move on. Regarding sentencing, Your Honor, I would all. like to request that due all. to Daryl Brooks's total I lack of concern all. for human life on November 21st, 2021, that for each count that the jury returned a guilty verdict, Daryl Brooks received the maximum sentence for each of those counts. Yep, Thank that's you. fair. Daryl Brooks is now completely checked out. He's just not. Um, Morris, I'm trying to look at messages, but combined we have over 20,000 people, so I will miss things. My emails are public if y'all need anything. Good morning. My name's Jeff Rogers. Uh, my children were victims, U and V. I'm a father of four, three of which were marching with me in the parade last November. Two of my children were struck and injured. Oh. I also serve as the president of the Waukesha Blazers baseball and fast pitch organization and was a couple, couple months into that job at the time of the parade. Yeah. I've debated whether or not to read a statement for this sentencing. At the end of the day, I felt it necessary to have my voice heard for my sake, for my family's sake, for and for kids. the Waukesha Blazers' sake, and for all the other victims. I'm here today with families that I love, and I'm so sorry that this happened. First of all, this event was completely avoidable, and from my perspective, there has been zero remorse, sympathy, or acknowledgement of the victims by the defendant. All he had to do was stop the vehicle when he saw the crowd, and none of these lives would have been changed forever. For this reason alone, he needs to be locked up for the rest of his life. But enough about him. This is about the impact on, of the event on me, my family, and our Blazers organization. I'd like to speak as a father, first of all. 
The impact this has had on my we're family and I has been we immense. Go- we are going to break. This last year has been full of confusion, irritation, anxiety, and depression. Yep. We haven't been able to live a normal life. The trial has been dragged out, and literally we were pulled back through to relive everything, all because this person wouldn't admit it like a man and take what was coming to him. My kids are some of the strongest people I know, and they have proven that through the faith in God they've displayed throughout. However, the impact this has had on them literally makes me sick. No more parades, that joy is gone. This is something that will never leave them. I'm still learning things today as well about what they heard and saw that day. I pray every night that God continues to strengthen them to push through and know that he is in control. That night when we got home, I'll never forget Caden looking at me with glassy eyes. He looked up at me and said, I'm really glad Riley is okay, and started to cry. When my wife Stacy sat on the chair next to me that night, it felt different. She hugged me longer than normal and a lot more firm than normal and said, thanks for keeping our kids safe. Everyone saw on the videos that were shown, we're literally inches away from losing three out of our four four children, and myself included. I thank God each day that he spared us and provided the adrenaline, courage, and strength to get my kids out of the way, gather all the kids we could, and pray together. My wife was going to come with us that night along with our toddler son. I play things in my head over and over, imagining what could have been if she would have come. Where would she have been standing when the SUV barreled through? I have flashbacks most days to Maya's jacket slipping through my hand. If I wouldn't have grabbed it the second time, I know what the outcome would have been. Riley still has trouble sleeping with some nights getting out of bed six, seven, eight, nine times because she heard a noise or doesn't feel safe. A few days ago, I was one-on-one in the car with her and I finally apologized for not finding her right away. Thank God our friend found her and kept her safe, but as her dad, I've lived with the fact that I couldn't find all my kids that night after it happened. I went way too long not knowing where my kids were, with panic overwhelming me. Yep. As a father, I can confidently say that this incident had a year-long impossible impact on me and our family. Are we managing? Yes, of course, as God is in control. Now to speak as the Blazers president. This was a happy gathering and almost the kickoff of my presidency with the Blazers since I was only a couple of months in. We are getting to know each other, welcoming a new coach, our new board members, and overall just ready to advertise our Blazers program. Looking back at the pictures from prior to the tragedy, we are so happy. You guys so don't much need love to and apologize We are ready me. for an awesome season. You don't I spoke just to prior about my perspective during the event as a father of three kids. Space. But as the president of our organization, the it's weight okay. of the moment to find an account for everyone felt like it was on my shoulders. We had nearly 35 people there. I knew I had lots of help, and for God. that I can't thank the other parents and coaches enough. The moment was a blur, the fear. and gathering and putting kids up in the truck was the priority. Just the, the From there, fear the kids I could find, find huddled with me in the theater, and we said a prayer yeah. for those injured and being attended to. I knew that the next few days were going to be intense, but I never fully grasped how crazy the following days, weeks, and months would be. Yeah, the amount of turmoil and struggle for our Blazers organization was literally tough. insurmountable. Yep. From the moment of the incident, the amount of media and law enforcement interaction was exhausting and unending. Media showing up at my door asking for individual participants' status. Unbeknownst to them, the two of my children were hurt. There was nonstop email flow, phone calls, planning, coordinating, and filtering through things. It was endless work. This job went from something I truly loved from my biggest passion in life to something I cried about for months. I went from giving speeches on Facebook Live about how cool our new indoor facility was to speaking at Jackson's funeral. From there, the community really pulled together. The amount of love and compassion that came our way was also unending. It was honestly overwhelming. For that, we cannot thank this community enough. Finally, I wanted to briefly touch on the true impact this has had on me. My faith was challenged over the past year, but I can confidently say it's stronger than ever. The hardest part about the whole incident was not knowing where my kids were, not having answers for what just happened, not knowing if more danger was coming. I knew I had Maya next to me, but when I went back and forth screaming for Caden and Riley, that horror plagues me every day. I go back to those moments quite often, and when I watch the videos during the trial, it brought back all those feelings. Pure and utter terror, that's what it was, and that's the impact it still has today. Finally, in closing, I'm a man of faith and wanted to share two Bible passages which have pushed me through. First of all, my confirmation passage, Joshua 1.9, it reads, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And secondly, I met with my pastor prior to testifying, and he provided me with an excellent part of scripture, Philippians 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understandings will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for listening, and may God strengthen us all. The fact that he was able to get through that statement is just a testament to the strength of this community and how supportive they've been of each other. It is just so difficult um, with what they've been through, with the trauma that they're still going through. This is only a year out. Oftentimes in homicide cases, sentencings can be years and years out. This is still relatively new, all things considered. It just, it's its absolutely heartbreaking. But y'all remember, thank you for not name calling in the chat. Thank you for adhering to our chat rules. It is hard. Daryl Brooks is testing all of our patients today um, with the eye rolling and the disrespect. My name is Jessica Gonzalez, and this is my husband, Juan Gonzalez Lopez. We represent the Blazers organization, as well as many others, and you could even argue the state of Wisconsin. Oh, she made a she made Last a weird the state of Wisconsin statement. statement. Good for you. My son scooched over on the couch over on the couch Good and for snuggled you. into me. He laid with his head on my lap and I stroked his hair. We stayed like that until it was time for bed. He knows we're here today, and it was as if he knew we needed a little extra love last night. Moments like these should be pure with love and affection. But since November 21st, they are mixed with flashes and images of what could have been. Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. This is one of the memories and words that I'll never forget and hear dozens of times a day without warning. The relief I felt hearing those words on November 21st was devastating, but I found my son unharmed. That should be the end of the story, right? We're fine, right? Physically, yes. But fine is a word we use when people ask us if we're okay. But we're Sarah, not. Sarah D, no judgment. It was only a short time before we had None readied for the parade, got our hot cocoa, and took pictures to snap a shot of the fun about to be had. Before the parade, I left him with his teammate and new friend Jackson. <laughs> at the Blazers drop-off spot and walked my daughter to her dance team location. Because everyone has a teammate With my mother-in-law visiting from Mexico, she was excited for her first Christmas parade. Stationed at the corner of the Clark Hotel with friends, my daughter's dance group waved with smiles as they passed us. She was headed to the library where I would pick her up. The Dancing Grannies, one of our favorite groups, performed flawlessly as they passed us. My son's baseball group was after the extreme dancers who were within with sight. Then the gasps and screams came from everywhere and the red SUV sped past us. I yelled stop and put my hands out like I had the power to make it happen. I felt like I was punched in the stomach when I realized the SUV came from the direction of my son's group. Yeah. Panicked and lightheaded and knowing my daughter was safe, I ran to find my son. Running through the streets, my legs felt like they had a life of their own. I found Jackson first. I saw his little body in his blazer's jersey. His eyes looking up, looking nowhere. I knew he was hurt badly. Seeing Jackson on the ground, I began looking for my son amongst, amongst the rest of the bodies. I screamed hysterically, searching frantically. What ifs filled my head. I heard mom from so many directions, but it wasn't him. Finally, it was. I turned to see him with other blazers who were in the team truck. He called out to me, Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. <laughs> yes, I found my son unharmed, but after the chaos continued, we ran. I covered his eyes as we rushed back to our group. I called my husband to tell him something terrible had happened, but had no words to explain. Headed for the library, we were told there was an active shooter. We ran again. I covered my son's head 
with my arms so bullets no would hit me first. He cried. I tried to assure him and myself that things like this don't happen. At the library, I ran up the stairs and shouted for my daughter, who was huddled with a friend and her daughter. Yes, I found my children unharmed. But after, the pain and terror continued. After the parade, we discovered people had died and that several people in my son's group were hit, including his coach and teammate. We learned that my son's teammate was in critical condition, but I already knew this. Yeah. I still see his eyes without closing mine. What does it feel like to attend a funeral of a child your age? I hate that my kids know. I hate that I didn't get a chance to cheer on my son and Jackson during the baseball season last year. I hate that my son said it was weird having one less teammate. For more than a week, it was late nights to avoid sleep and our family of four piled into one bed. There was no question this was a traumatic experience. Counselors were available. My son didn't want to talk about it. And today still doesn't. I tried to return to work. I tried to return to teaching. I couldn't make it through a day without feeling hypervigilant, yeah. startling at every noise, having a panic attack from the sound of a door, shout, thud, gasp, anything and everything. After the parade, it I couldn't make it through a day. And they tried My joy best. disappeared. I felt guilty. I had no right to feel joy since my son and daughter were alive and others were not. I was open about the questions my kids and had. The trauma, it's just... I cried and screamed in agony when they weren't around. I overreacted, shouting and pulling my kids near in the parking lots and streets or any time I saw a car come within a quarter mile away, convinced they all had ill intentions. PTSD throws all the punches. Yep. I left my career to work intensively on healing in a program for PTSD. I have only just returned to the workplace, only just a month ago. Something quieter, something with less action. Because after almost one year, some days still feel like November 21st was yesterday. Intrusive memories, hypervigilance, nightmares, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, anger, guilt, shame. These are all things I and others live with daily because Daryl Brooks drove through our joy and turned it to terror. When he suggested he could have hit more, oh, shit. he was wrong. He hit everyone. The toll this event has taken on everyone, physically hurt or not, is tremendous. And it sickens me to know that there are so many others with a similar story as ours. I know some today may offer forgiveness, but for me, forgiveness is for accidents for mistakes or poor choices that the offender expresses remorse for their actions. It's okay. Daryl Brooks offers no remorse, but he did search for sympathy for himself. Sir? I cannot offer forgiveness. And you don't have to. I will not. Daryl Brooks should be held accountable for every second of pain and trauma he inflicted on all of us that day including the many years inflicted already on Ms. Patterson. Free, he is and always will be a danger to society. Yeah, free's not an option. With that, Your Honor, I ask that the full sentence is issued and he spends the rest of his days in prison without the chance of parole. Thank you. You did a good job, Mama. Thank you, ma'am.
yeah, he's not, he's not, um, he's not. I'm Lindsay Conkle, and my family walked with the Waukesha Blazers. November 21st, 2021, no. my family walked in the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Melissa Restitution. My boys were dressed proudly in their baseball jerseys, <clears throat> streets lined with smiling faces. The crowd was happy and excited. In a split second, excited cheers turned into sounds of screaming and horror. A trail of bloody bodies were left laying in the road. My family was not physically injured that day. We somehow dodged the path of the car by inches. Our mental and emotional injuries were severe and they remain a struggle for us every day. Yeah. We have the image and the sound plow of a SUV plowing through people burned into our minds for the rest of our lives. Well, the sounds of My the children worst. were separated and I ran through a trail of bloody bodies that were left laying in the road. I will not forget how many people I saw, some seizing in an intersection, some unconscious and some not. My children cried themselves to sleep for weeks after and still do. Heather, the judge will they have to say tomorrow. They still wake up with nightmares, as do I. They could not walk in a parking lot without clinging to me, shaking and terrified that a car would try to run them down. We suffer yeah. from major panic attacks and PTSD. All from a day that was supposed to be happy and exciting. As parents, we have to try to help cope with, with our children while we do not know how to cope ourselves. My children, my family, and I, and every person that we know will never be the same after that day. There were many people that were fortunate, fortunate enough to walk away unharmed. However, Jackson Sparks was not one of those people. A child, eight-year-old, walking next to his big brother with his whole life ahead of him. The next time my children wore their baseball jerseys was to a funeral. A funeral for an eight-year-old boy their friend, their teammate, that they have spent many days playing and making memories at while at their brother's baseball games. I mean, they can't curse. Most probably won't. His family and friends will never see his smiling face light up a room, and his team will never be able to celebrate a win with him on the baseball field ever again. Every moment of Jackson's life that was ahead of him was ripped away by Daryl Brooks. You, Daryl Brooks, you hid in a children's playhouse and ditched your hoodie in a sandal. That playhouse happened to be my children's, at the house oh. we just moved out of a couple of months prior. That playhouse was built for them, built for my sons, and you hid there after you left their friend and teammate lifeless in a road along with many others. You didn't just get lost in a parade route. You disregarded police and the safety of hundreds, and you disregarded life. You very selfishly ripped away the joy from the families who were there just to bring joy to others. There are many holes left in our community, but our community has grown stronger and we all have each other. You, however, will have no one. You will have no one in a cell where you belong for the rest of your life. Thank you, Judge Doro, and we ask that please, he never see the light of day again. He's laughing. Thank you. She did an incredible job. The impact statements have been respectful. They've been powerful. Um, that no one has gone off on him. Um, they've made their statements about how this has impacted them. His behavior will be seen by the court, and she will address it, I'm sure, in her statement tomorrow. My name is it makes Sherry it very Sparks. hard for us to adhere. I am Jackson and Tucker's mom. Oh. I stand here today with my son, Tucker, rules. and my husband, Aaron. Just a warning. I'm here today to represent my family. This mother lost her child. for my boys who were both struck down by the red SUV on November 21st. One of her kids survived I want to give didn't. a voice to our son, Jackson Sparks. Our family is forever changed. We are hurt, angry, and traumatized, And they're not gonna show her because her broken. other son is with her. November 21st was a day that was supposed to be fun and filled with laughter and smiles. Instead, it became a nightmare full of fear, screams, and tears. He's not going to see the light of day. She's going to keep looking down, I imagine. My boys were walking in the Waukesha the Christmas Parade with their baseball teammates, down. friends, and coaches. It was a chilly and windy day that day, so we all layered up and prepared to kickstart our holiday season. We met up with our Blazers group, decorated the truck, prepared the buckets of candy and flyers for the boys, took some group photos, and then I left to go find my seat near the end of the parade route. 
I think and it's wait important they show his behavior too because it's what the judge is going to partly base no sentencing on. I had no idea then the nightmare that was coming my way. Yeah, I'd rather see the judge a bit too. Nor did I know that it would be the last time I would hear Jackson's voice and see his smile. I wish I would have known then that the hug he gave me before I went to sit down was the last hug I would ever get from him. I would have held on to him a lot longer. <laughs> After the red SUV flew past us, it was pure chaos. I will never, ever forget the horrible sound of the car hitting bodies and the thud of bodies landing on the ground. I immediately grabbed my favorite plaid blanket, ran up the street to find my boys. What I found shook my world. I saw Jackson first in the arms of a police officer. He was running him to get a medical attention. My husband was right behind them and told me that Tucker he is had been trying struggled. to hold it. Pointed me back to the direction where Tucker was. The ADA knows that it's just photo, over. That's Tucker underneath my blanket there, the plaid blanket. So they're showing pictures. My world came crashing down at that moment. I wanted to scream. I wanted to throw up and cry. Adrenaline kicked in and I went to find my boy. I spotted Jackson's baseball hat lying in the road first. Then Tucker's hat. Then I found Jackson's shoe, which kind of led me to Tucker. I finally spotted him. He was one of the many bodies lying in the road, covered in blankets. I recognized the shoes on his feet. That's how I found him. They are sticking out from under the blanket. I stayed at Tucker's side as he lay in the road waiting for an ambulance to come back for him. He was semi-conscious, but we couldn't move him without a backboard due to his head being injured. They had run out of backboards. Luckily, a nearby shop owner slash hero dragged a door out of her shop she to roll him staring. onto so we could she get him out of the cold and get him warm. watching Jackson's hour, mom talk. laying out in the cold road where he was thrown from impact. This, photo, please. this, this is, is what we're I facing next. Do. Obviously. Both boys had traumatic head and brain injuries. They both ended up in the ICU at Children's Hospital. Their rooms He's just a few doors to. down from one another. The next day, Tucker asked us about Jackson, if he was okay or was he worse than himself. Do you have any idea how gut-wrenching it is to have to explain your 12-year-old son no. that his little brother isn't going to make it? His injuries were too extensive for his little body to come back from and that he won't be coming home with us ever again. Leaving him at the hospital was brutal. To see the confusion, yeah. frustration, and hurt on his face when he's standing over his little brother in his hospital room, taking in all the machines he was hooked up to. It... Tucker remembers everything up until the moment he was hit. He had actually turned around and saw the SUV coming the towards them. She can talk. He said Jackson was right next to him. Is mind he said he saw a few me. people get hit, and then he tried to run out of harm's way. He didn't make it. Being the protective big brother, Tucker run. blamed himself. He felt he should have tried to grab Jackson or done more to protect his little brother. It broke my heart to hear him saying these things. Gosh. Tucker's physical injuries were also severe. He still struggles with memory issues and brain processing speed. The mental and emotional damage is severe. Traumatic brain injury. Survivor's guilt, PTSD, oh. anxiety. He still gets headaches. His little brother was taken from him. He's suddenly an only child now. He misses his little brother and his playmate. Jackson brought out the silly in him, and life will never be the same without him. You can go to the next photo. Every holiday, special event, family function, vacation there will always be an empty chair or space where jackson should be the other da might jackson's be standing absence with is very prominent families. every day we face that vacancy and it triggers sadness and trauma jackson's life was taken from him and taken from us life isn't the same without him and it never will be this morning i should have spent the morning making him yep. breakfast taking him to school hearing about his day later Instead, I'm standing here in this courtroom asking for justice for my boys. Yep. We came so close to losing both of them that day. 
I miss Jackson every second of every single day. I feel gutted and broken. It hurts to breathe sometimes. It hurts to live without him here. My mama's soul aches for him. I am emotionally and mentally exhausted. The pain I carry with me every day feels so heavy. You can hear it. Yet I have to push forward, still be there to help Tucker heal and right. move forward with find our new normal. Because you still have to be a mom. Place. As a family of faith, we know this man will face God's judgment someday for his actions. Until then, we feel it is this court's duty and responsibility to all the victims yeah, ADA Zach to sentence is this trying man to, to the maximum it. penalty allowed under Wisconsin law. Tapping into for rage each and helps. every guilty charge. Tapping into rage we feel helps. This man does hold not deserve to see freedom in our lifetime, nor our son Tucker's lifetime. We have learned throughout this trial that this man is incapable of empathy or remorse. He has shown no sympathy nor apology for all, the, all of the pain, suffering, and loss of life he has caused to so many. This man not only took Jackson away from our family, he violently ripped Jackson out of our lives. Jackson was only eight years old. Eight. He only had eight years here with us. He was robbed of everything. He will never get to hit a home run, catch frogs with his brother again, meet his wrestling hero, Braun Strowman. He won't ask a girl to prom. He won't go to college, get married, or have children of his own. Jackson will never be able to do any of these things. These milestones will never happen. He was a bright light in our lives. He was very shy to most people, but those close to him, to his family, he was a big ball of energy. He was charismatic and full of light in life. His life was cut out way too short. Jackson and the other victims deserve justice. They do. We deserve closure in order to heal and find our new normal. We hope to achieve that today. Thank you. And thank oh. you, prosecution, Judge Doro. Very much. Thank you. Trying to thank tap into the rage here. to hold the tears. I'm very familiar with that. It didn't always work for me. Request a break and bring in the second group. All right. Yes, the court's going to step off as well while you do that. Yeah, the we'll court's going to need a break. break. Thank you. I need a break. We all need a break. But what we are going to do for a moment is I have a sponsor today. Um, and we rarely have sponsors on live streams because you never know what a live stream might bring. Today's live stream has brought puffy red-faced Emily. So we are going to take a break. We are going to do a sponsor. We are going to come back and we are going to talk about victim impact statements and about this is what happens, not on this scale because so many were impacted, but this is what happens in courtrooms across the country day in and day out after assault trials, homicide trials, domestic violence trials. This, this is part of the day-to-day -day of criminal justice. So, um, I think it's important to cover. I think it's important to give um, to give kind of a face to the stories that you read in the news and in our chat to hold space to not just rage on the defendant, but to hold space for the victims who are walking through stuff that most of us can't imagine because I don't know. Um, I don't know how you stand and make those statements without being overtaken by rage. And the fact that people do, that they are able to speak what they've been through to the person who did it can constantly um, it kind of boggles my mind and earns the deepest respect because it's just, it's just so hard. But we are... We are going to do the sponsor and then we're going to answer some questions in the chat and we'll go from there. Do impact statements go far in sentences? We're going to talk about that right after our sponsor. So thank you for the awkward transition to our stream sponsor today. But I, you know, we have sponsors on the channel. Today is a day. Hear ye, hear ye. We are taking this break for our sponsor established titles to announce that I will now be going by Lady. Emily D. Baker. That's right. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands in Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts and titling yourself as lord or lady. It all ties back to a historic Scottish custom where landowners were referred to as lairds or lords 
and ladies in English. The title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. And you get the official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number. You can use it to see the exact location of your land. And the first 200 purchasing the title pack with my link supporting my channel here will effectively be next to me or within a few minutes just by walking. But it doesn't matter because what we can do is create like a little law nerd kingdom in Scotland. I'm here for it. Established Titles plants a tree with every order and works with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation. With your title pack, you can officially change your name to use Lord or Lady as your prefix on things like credit cards and plane tickets. Plus, it makes an amazing last-minute gift. And Established Titles is running a massive early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code Emily D. Baker, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Emily D. Baker to get your gifts now and support me and the channel. That's EstablishedTitles.com slash Emily D. Baker. I can't wait to see you in the kingdom of the law nerds, or at least just let me know if you, if you have retitled yourself, Lord or Lady. I'm curious. Let's get back to today's stream. Let's just run away to Scotland. Let's just run away to Scotland. Let's just, let's just uh, create law nerd land. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. <sighs> Cheers to law nerd land. I'm ready for it. Question is the jury listening to this also Donna. So as um, as I explained earlier, and I'll explain throughout the stream, the jury's job is done. They are the fact finders. Do I think that jurors might be watching this streaming? Possibly. The jurors know. The jurors have seen it. The jurors saw the video that the prosecution put up at the end that we heard people in the courtroom sobbing, watching. The jurors have seen it. They might not be able to. And to that, no shade. Um, these can be watched later. I've never had jurors be present for impact statements they've seen it um jurors don't always need to know more than what they've already seen so that if they choose to watch it because it's streaming that will be up to them but no the jurors in the criminal in the criminal justice system the jurors are the fact finders so they find the facts they they pronounced guilt in most circumstances the judge pronounces sentencing in the rare circumstance when we're dealing with death penalty cases, there can be a jury determination of life without parole or death. Um, that varies by jurisdiction. That's not a consideration in this jurisdiction as there is no death penalty. So there, there are very limited and rare circumstances where the jury is involved in the sentencing. Generally, it is just the judge. Um, a lot of you have asked, do these impact the impact, do the impact statements impact the sentencing? Yes, they absolutely can in cases where there is um in cases where there is more discretion. This is a case where there's not going to be a ton of discretion in sentencing. Some of the sentencing is mandatory and the defendant is going to get multiple life sentences. So is there much more that the judge can do other than give him 800 years to life and life and then more life plus more life and then more life and then you just keep serving sentences into, you know, the the universe and the metaverse and wherever else? Not much more can be done, but the judge can make her feelings clear during her statement, which we know will be tomorrow. I expect that the judge will have a few things to say. I have seen judges unhinge on defendants. Um, there are cases that I've talked about. I don't talk about a lot of my cases, especially the hard ones, because we try to keep the trauma in and, and talk about it at therapy. But there are cases where I have absolutely seen the judges say to people, that they are despicable human beings, that the crimes that they have done are appalling, that on and on and on. So I have seen judges let the defendant know. Judge Darrow has been restrained um, in this. We will see tomorrow. We will see tomorrow what the judge has to say. The impact statements have been tremendously respectful. Um, 
And given the behavior of this defendant during the trial, the fact that the victims have been able to say um, what has impacted them without going after the defendant is just a testament to the strength of this community. And I think that's another reason to watch these together, another reason we're streaming them together, not just to hold space for it, but what we're also seeing in how traumatized people have been is how much they have leaned into each other and how much this community came together. And I think that is part of the takeaway that, yes, there are terrible, horrible things that happen in this life we live as humans, but there can be so much comfort that we can offer each other by being decent human beings. And that's what you're seeing from this community is they showed up for each other. And they showed up for each other in a massive way to, to survive this together. And we really are, as people, and this is this is a bigger, like, Emily, are we going to get back to questions? Yep. Yep, we are. Um, We really are better as people when we connect with each other than when we fight with each other. And I still hope that we can do that. And we do that here. And it's okay that you're coming in late from Taylor Swift tickets. We're just having all of the feels. I hope you got your Taylor Swift tickets. We all need Taylor Swift tickets after watching this sentencing. Um, so it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Question, can the state tell the victims what they can say in their statement? Like tell them not to say anything hateful to Daryl. Um, the state in a case like this has worked with these victims for a year and if the victims ask for, ask for guidance, I imagine what the prosecutors would say is speak from the heart, talk about your experience, and ask the judge for the sentence that you want, and that's going to be about it. Um, it seems that most of these people don't want to give him the satisfaction of rage, and they have leaned in to faith and community to talk about their experiences to the judge. Will we see some of it? Maybe. I mean, somebody did scream. Um, somebody did scream at him when he was convicted and was removed from the courtroom. We've seen people express anger to him. Can the judge rewatch his reactions? No. The judge is gonna. The the judges live in this in real time. And trust me, this is hard through a screen. This is a lot harder when you are in person in court. We saw the judge moving her glasses. Um, I have no poker face because I become so red, but we saw the judge absolutely trying to dab, um, dab away tears. We see that the prosecutors are just crying because how can you not? Um, I've cried through more than a few <laughs> victim impact statements and I always ended up apologizing for it. Today, we're not apologizing. Um, and we also saw the, the male DA sitting there just... You could see his face was red, but just sitting there holding it in. So let's get to some of the questions and, and you know, hold hold space. We've watched this trial. This is the very end of this trial, and we are going to just hold space for for those who have been through this and hear their really hear their stories about what this has done um, to them and to their community. Can they block him? Not roll his eyes at kids testifying. There's not much they can do. Um, so far, the way courtrooms are set up, Brooks is going to be facing the judge. The judge is going to be facing the victims. They are. They might be to the side of him a little bit. I don't know how much they're going to see him. Um, but no, there's not much they can do. They can't make someone sit there and be respectful. You can't make someone sit there and listen. You can't make someone give a shit if they don't give a shit. He stood up in his closing and said, my conscience is clear. These victims know that. They know that. Um, Tails said, in some ways, it feels intrusive listening to the victims. I love learning about how the court and the law, but this is so personal and raw. It's very personal and raw. Um, it is. And again, the court could have could have not had um, these televised, but I think their stories have been told through the uh, through the trial. I think it's it's very fair that their stories of survival and how they move forward with their lives also get told. Uh, question, what is the maximum sentence he can receive? It's like 800 plus years to life plus, plus right, six life counts. On. 
and the, the court is back i'm going to keep getting to some more questions the court needed a minute i'm sure to blow her nose and take a deep breath and shake it off a little bit we're all going to need a bath after this um, so now you get to see the layout a little this is this is the microphone is where the victims are speaking daryl brooks is right there so they are speaking at that mic he is right there these courtrooms are not big he is feet away he is feet away um and then the judge and then the prosecutors here. So he is, he is not, he's, I mean, within spitting distance. He's, he's. I'm victim LLO and on November 21st, 2021, <sighs> me and my family's life changed forever. My brother and I were headed Just to parade. We've been scared of parades, not letting us feel safe and comfortable. Warning. Or even being able to run out into the road to fetch candy. For example, this is going to break when the DAs thoroughly. I had parade, all my friends were asking me why I didn't want to go out onto the road to get candy. And I said, because of the walkie shop parade. And I was mad because if the parade incident did not happen, I'd be able to go onto the road to enjoy something as simple as a parade. When I got to the parade with my friends, I constantly remember to not go onto the road to be better safe than sorry. It is the last thing I want to happen again. How could you do this? Think of your kids. Would you do this to them? I'm just a child with a lifetime left to live. I'm also here from a younger brother, victim KKK. When he is hit by the front of the car, he was traumatized for him. I feel his fear. I feel his pain. Because when I was hit, I broke down into tears too. On the way to the hospital, we had to lay our head down on the floor because we heard there was a shooter. My fingers, my whole body was paralyzed in fear and fright. When we made it to the hospital, I was terrified because I thought I broke my fingers. And when they asked me what happened, I was too busy crying that I couldn't speak. I still think about this event to this day. A day after the parade, I couldn't even go to school because of what he did. All my friends were worried about me, texting me, asking if I was even alive. Sometimes I even think of all the others that were hit and how they were in the hospital for longer than me. And how their parents were probably praying that their kids would be okay and that this would be a once in a lifetime happening. I think this should have never happened to us. The day I went back to school, everyone was asking me a million questions every time I was alone. Everyone was babying me, acting like, I was, acting like one of my family members was killed. What makes it worse is that almost a year ago, my dog died and I have lived with him my whole life. So I was extra sad and upset. At that moment, I realized that our family Not had to find dog. justice against the man who hit too many people and cause a nightmare on November 21st, 2021. Oh, Ask for this pain to never be caused again. I'm so glad. Oh, Daryl Brooks. And I've been asked to read a statement by victim KKK. This is the other kiddo, mm -hmm. the brother of the when kiddo When I got that hit by spoke. the car that day, it hurt a lot. I got hit on my right leg and it still kind of hurts now and then. That hit changed my life, and it still scares me sometimes when I think about it. I also it feel bad for the families who lost someone and everyone who died and was in the parade. And then he drew a picture of a SUV, and it says, car that hit me, and there's a little figure, oh my God. And a handy bucket and bottle, and me. So they handed that to me on behalf of Victor. Because throwing candy KKK. in the road is what you do at these parades. For all sorry, of the. You need to take a break for a second, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's important. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. We'll do that. Oh shit. The, did you see? Did you see? Deputy Pokerface was just like, "What are we taking a break for? What is happening?" Yeah, Brooks doesn't know what's happening either. I don't know what's happening. Um, he's like, "What is hap? What just happened? Something happened." I don't know what happened. Um, oh my goodness. The kids, I I don't know how as a parent you work through your kid with that, but if they want to talk, I think you let them talk. If they want to write, you let them write. If they want to draw, you let them draw. Um, and I don't know what it would be like for a kid to be in a courtroom with the person who killed their friend, hit their brother. It's just, oh, the little voices something just happened though in court and we saw the judge went off the bench very quickly. Um, we saw 
the DA say, we have to take a break. It's important. And they were in the middle of reading an impact statement. Normally you would never have the DA um, interrupting. And if it was something because of the judge, you would, um, you would expect that the judge would be the one saying we need to take a break. It's important, not the DA. So I don't know what's happening. We're going to wait. They might explain. They might not explain. Um, I'm sorry if any of you are at work. Um, I apologize. So I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. These are very, very hard. Um, these are very hard. So if, if y'all don't mind, um, just not speculating one, because people do look at the chat, um, and B, because I don't want to put any information out there that's that's not information. So hopefully we will figure out what happened. I'm going to go back to answering questions. Um, I just, I know, Tally, I default to apologizing. Thank you. I'm still working on it. Look, I'm still working on fighting the fact that I've been taught my entire life to apologize for my feelings. I am fighting. I am fighting that every day. And it is hard because I am, I am very emotional today. So, I mean... It just, one of the things as a DA, I've, I tried very, very hard not to, not just dump the trauma on my family and my kids, but not let um, anyone know other than other DAs. And it was, it's difficult. And after I left the DA's office and moved into this, I started bringing those walls back down, not just to heal myself, but also to have those connections that get put on the other side of the wall again. And so now we're just, the wall... The walls aren't going back up. So here we are in all of the empath human emotion. Do you know anyone in the courtroom at the moment? Not this one. This is well out my jurisdiction. So um, how do you get through these when you're the trial lawyer? Uh, the same way these DAs are with a lot of Kleenex and you try not to, you try not to audibly sob. And it depends. There were, there were cases where I was so still enraged um, by what the defendant had done, that the rage kind of trumps actually getting into the grief of the thing. And there were some that I cried. There were some that I could barely get through reading the victim impact statement. When, the vi when you know, the victim's mother is like, can you read this? I'm like, it's my job to read it. Can I? We'll see. And I just cried through the whole thing. Just voice choked up, cried. Because I'm like, I just... Yeah, I have feelings. And it's it's ha very hard to read impact statements. It's just very hard. I strangely I do better speaking at funerals. I'm I, it, honoring honoring life well lived is much easier than victim impact statements. Victim impact statements are the hardest thing. So we're going to get to some questions. I'm going to try to find something that we can that we can all laugh about for a moment. Hey, we got a new Starbucks mug. Can we just pro can we just Snaps for the new Starbucks mug. That's what we got. That's what we've got. That's what we've got. Oh, and while I was traveling for my friend who won her judicial election, yay, judge-elect Abby, um, while I was traveling, my husband texted me with a picture of the thing I'm going to show you, and the statement of W2F is this. I got a new, I got a new cup. Because um, I wanted to check the size on this one versus the other one because I have no spatial awareness. And so I, you can tell me it's a 40 ounce cup, but until I see it, I don't know how to process that in my brain. So I just need to buy it so I can actually see it. This is why online shopping doesn't work well for me, but, um, this thing's glorious. I'm like, okay, if we can get through two of these in a day, we're, we're good. Uh, cause I lose track of water. So we're going to hydrate. We have sparkly Starbucks. We have, oh, we have, we have. Stanley cups. Look, cups make me happy. All right, we've got cups. We've got a fan. We're just, we're pulling out all the streamer tricks today. Woo! Put the tears back in my face. Back in my face. Back with you. Back with you. Oh, that feels so good. All right, we're going to fan y'all as well. We're all going to take a deep breath. All right. We got my new, we got my new Lawnards zip up hoodie on. We got, we got, these are, we embroidered them this time. Look at that. And we're going to go to questions. I really want to know what's happening in court, though. I'm going to go to Twitter real quick, you know, the source of all information, entertainment, dumpster fire, and everything else, and see. I think Chanley Painter is in the courtroom, but I don't know if she is, um, if she's moved on to another, another um, 
another one. So let's see. My friend, the man about tech Viper is like, I only have one goal today. Secure one ticket to see Taylor Swift in Nashville. Wait, can we go together? Can we? Uh, I want to go. <laughs> I will buy resale. I just, I will. I can't do this today. Um, I want to go. I want to go see Taylor Swift in Nashville. Law nerds. All right, let's see if Chanley Painter is, is here in uh, in this court because I really want to know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what else is going on on the internet. I'm not looking at trending. I will get distracted. Uh, the only thing I saw was my friend Viper talking about getting Taylor Swift tickets. And truthfully, we need to just... Dis- <laughs> we need- Chanley is in court. Okay, perfect. Chanley is in court. Um, let's see. I know y'all are waiting to buy tickets. It's all right. We need a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's see. Um, no, no updates. Chanley, what's happening? We need to know. Maybe if I just tweet it, we'll get answers. Um, let's see. Something. Oh, no, they're not on recess. They needed an immediate break. It was urgent. This is not a normal recess. This is this is a... Uh, this is something is up. So let's see. Something caused. Uh, or Daryl Brooks didn't know what was up. Um, to stop. Uh, the DA said it was urgent. Hope that Chanley Painter has an update from being in court at some point. All right, let's go. Um, In the middle of an impact statement. And that was odd. This is, this is, uh, this is just peak streaming. It really is. Uh, all right, we're tweeting it out. My brain can't, my brain can normally multitask pretty well, but it just, ooh, it just, um, her dog, it, the dog, the fact that this poor kiddo was like, this all happened. This was super hard. And then my dog died. Um, let's see someone else. They gave the victims letters. So it started with victim a B, C, D, and it went through the alphabet multiple times. So we got victim Z, Z, and B, B, B. So that is why the victims have letters and multitudes of letters because they gave each of the victims uh, a letter designation. And there were so many that they had to go through the alphabet multiple times. So uh, let's see. Chanley just tweeted, but not about what happened to pause everything. Well, that's what, that's the information that we need. So the court stopped abruptly and said, we are taking a break. And that was it. Um, So that was all. All right. We'll keep an eye on that. Let us move on. We're going to get to super chats and questions and, and hopefully we'll figure out what happened. Um, Carrie W. said, I live here in Waukesha on local, uh, nothing on local news. We're getting two to four inches of snow, but that's, that is, but that is unusual for here. Is that unusual? I mean, I, if snow is a concern and like, we're going to have to break early so people can drive home. That's not something they would stop in the middle of a victim impact statement for. So court TV was probably told by court staff that it's going to be a 30 minute break. Something happened. So we don't know what it is. Um, here we can switch. We can switch our feeds and see if there's any update. But court TV is in the courtroom, so they would know. Um, but when the court walked off the bench, it was really, it was really the DA said, we need to take a break. It's urgent. And here, let's just go back. We're gonna go back and see what happened while we are all fat stunned, and then we'll we'll come back in time. Cause Daryl Brooks was sitting there looking confused. We were in the middle of an impact statement and something happened. Let's just go back to what happened and take a look again on behalf of victim kkk so this was reading the statement that's the head prosecutor 
who said, Your Honor, we need to take a break here. Let's go back um, five seconds. This is the end of the letter, and we'll go from there. Um, hopefully you can hear her say, Your Honor, we need to take a break. So they handed that to me on behalf of victim KKK. <clears throat> Your Honor, we need to take a break for a second, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's important. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. We need to take a break, Your Honor. I'm sorry. It's important. We'll do that. The bailiff immediately got up. We see bailiffs leaving the courtrooms, and the judge gets off the bench immediately. And Daryl, second bailiff goes by, and Daryl Brooks is sitting there, looking, looking like the rest of us. Truly, in that moment confused. So the DA said, we need to take a break. It's important. And court TV is reporting that it's a 30 minute break. All right, let's get to super chats and questions as best that we can. Um, let's see. So it's unusual, uh, Amy, it's unusual. Once they took a break, they took a break to switch over groups of the, um, groups of the impact statements. It's very unusual to stop in the middle of an impact statement as someone is standing up. It's very unusual to take a break like that in that way. Um, normally, the judge will say we're taking a recess. Normally, when we're doing a complete day like this, the judge will not take a recess um, until lunch to help people get through it. Sometimes sitting in the courtroom, the anticipation of having to speak can be very difficult for people. So the courts tend to move through as quickly as they can to get to the lunch break and then take a break. So this is um, this is an interesting thing. Oh, she meant it isn't unusual. I'm guessing we live in Wisconsin. We get dumped on. It seems like snow wouldn't be the thing that would cause that because that you can just handle at the lunch break. So um, Judge Darrow has three kids. I, know, I haven't looked up much personal information on this judge, but I know that this judge is also a mom. I mean, she, her poker face is better than mine. Mine gets all red. Even if I don't, even if there aren't tears, even, it's just, you will see it. You will see it. So let us keep going. Um, Miss Freddie, did they give a victim the designation? Yes, they did. With the three Ks. They did. They went A, B, C, D all the way through and then A, A through Z, Z and then A, A, A through Z, Z, Z. So yes, um, they didn't skip it. I don't, I don't know why. So could have been a bathroom thing. I doubt it. I doubt it. So all the victims had that designation of some, some categorization of letters. Why they didn't skip that one, I do not know. So um, personal reason with the prosecution team, normally not. Normally not. Um, unless it's something bad. Um it it the prosecution team's the one that asks for the break. Uh, generally, there wouldn't need to be one. So, so it I don't know. It could I don't know. I don't know. It's something that they needed to to do. But if the judge needed a break, the judge would have been the one that initiated it and said it. So, I saw someone say there was a disturbance. I'm gonna wait until we go back on the record and see, um, and and just wait because we don't want to give misinformation in the chat. So I'm just going to wait. And I, I mean, I'm not an investigative reporter, so I'm not going to do the research on it because uh, when things happen abruptly, the information that can come out um, can often need to be updated. So, uh, so with that, and again, if the, I see some of you saying what the male prosecutor was gone, even if the male prosecutor had walked out they have multiple other prosecutors. They could continue. They could continue um, doing the doing that. So I'm not going to speculate. We're going to answer. So um, wrong answers only. Scrape said a plaintiff suddenly materialized. Yes, wrong answer only. Wrong answers only. The state of Wisconsin showed up and they needed to take a break to allow the state of Wisconsin to get through the door. So. Emily, what's the strangest thing you've seen that's interrupted a court proceeding? I mean, there was one time I tripped and fell onto a defendant. Uh, the court was super pissed at me, and that was that was difficult. That was strange. Um, and then, you know, I've seen people freak out. We've we've seen mostly unpleasant things, not too many funny things, sadly. Um, 
mostly unpleasant things. So let us go through the, um, maybe they're addressing subject matter jurisdiction. Yep. Maybe, maybe how long since they've been on break. I have no idea. Wrong answer only Elaine found <laughs> Elaine found the unmute button. Um, wrong answer only. There's a disturbance in the force. There's definitely a disturbance in the force. Um, with all of this, because it's hard. You fell on a defendant. Do we need to tell that story? Maybe we just need to tell that story. I fell on a defendant who was in custody. Um, Daryl Brooks patting his heart when the kids spoke. I know it's rage inducing. So I just got two titles, Lord and Lady One for me and one for my grandson. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much. Um, the prosecutors heard the ice cream truck. I think that's actually correct. I think they needed to run. So... Funny court story, please. It wasn't funny to me at the time. It was terrifying. And I got yelled at. I got yelled at so much. Um, I got yelled at so much. So let I will I will tell you that and we'll we'll do there. DA got her Taylor Swift notification. Yes, Your Honor, it's important. It is my time. My number is up for Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> for Taylor Swift tickets. The days I've tried to to purchase tickets when court has interrupted me buying like my Dave Matthews tickets. So what do you think judge is taking notes on? I think the judge is trying to focus to not absolutely lose her shit. And I think the judge is taking notes on who spoke and a note or two about them. So when the judge goes to sentencing, she can address people and, and humanize the court system and address, thank you for speaking, you know, Jessica, thank you for sharing that this happened to you, a victim, you know, to count 20, what have you, those things. Wrong answer only. They discovered the flag had fringe and they need to change it. Yes, I think so. Subject matter jurisdiction showed up. Yes. Um, wrong answer. A rogue exhibity has entered the room. Yes. Um, they ran out of Amica cream. True. New supply of tissues. Yes. Wrong answers only. Daryl figured out his real name. He said it at the beginning. Um, the Chupacabra showed up. Here we go. Emergency group nap. Yes. Emergency group nap. Yes. Starbucks is there, maybe. Um, wrong answer. Amber Heard is no longer stateless. They've all heard the news. That maybe. Um, sun flares took out the internet. Perfect. Tell the story, please. All right, we'll we'll tell that story. I think some of you have probably heard it. Um, maybe the lawful law show up showed up. So, how do I get that hoodie, Julie? What a great question. The embroidered. Zip, zippity dippity, Lawnard hoodie is at lawnardshop.com. We have a sale right now. For those of you that are new, go ahead and pop a one in the chat. Actually, no, wait. Let's um, let's put up a poll. It'll be much easier to see. Migalina, if you'll put up a poll and ask people if this is their first live stream with me. Um, normally, my face is not nearly so red and puffy. We can put up a poll. Is this your first live stream with me? Yes or no? Um, so the Lawnard shop is running a sale. Because it's the three-year anniversary of the podcast that started it all. I started podcasting and I have a special episode up on the audio version of The Emily Show talking about the three years, talking about how the podcast led to my YouTube channel being this and what it is today and how that journey began and not wanting to have my face on the internet nearly as much. I'm like, podcasting makes so much sense. And now here we are on video all day or day. This is just what we do now. This is just our life. So... With that, um, yeah, that so there is a sale running because of the because of the anniversary. And so if you go to the lawnard shop, you will see the details of the sale. The members, you have those details in the members only spaces. Taco Tuesday caused this break. That's the only correct answer. Is must break for tacos. I'll break for tacos. I will always fucking break for tacos. Tacos. DA ran out to get the blue Stanley mug. Yep. You can find them at select Starbucks, not the Target Starbucks, just the Starbucks Starbucks. Can I tell you all how angry I am? Let me just share with what I'm angry about. Wrong answer only. Post office turned up with letters to Santa. Fair. They, the queues have been paused for Taylor sales. Uh-oh. That means they're almost out of tickets. That's not good. That's not good. So my favorite Starbucks here in Middle Tennessee, um, not near my house because nothing's near my house. So not near my house because nothing's near my house. Wait, I saw... Uh, Chanley tweeted eight minutes ago, but not about the situation. Yeah. I'm hoping we'll get an answer about the situation. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. 
So my favorite Starbucks got remodeled and they did a great remodeling. I was so excited to go in and see what they did. I asked the staff all about it. Like team, what have, what have they done? They completely redid the layout. So it was easier to facilitate the drive through and the mobile pickup. Cause that's 90% of the way people use that particular Starbucks. My absolute favorite Starbucks near Franklin, Tennessee favorite. So, and that's the one that had this. And I was very excited to see it. This Starbucks 1010 gets my drink, right? Their, their cold brew never tastes kind of bitter and burnt favorite Starbucks. They just reopened. They're also, there's a great pokey stop right there. Love it. So favorite Starbucks, the team at this Starbucks is 1010 a team all the time. And the drive through moves fast. It's beautifully remodeled. The mobile order pickup is super easy to go grab. Favorite one. Every Starbucks is about 20 minutes away from my house. So, so with that, uh, favorite Starbucks just reopened. So I get, I go out of town, uh, to celebrate the election with my friend or to primal scream, you know, if, if hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent and she did not win. So I, I went to Palm Springs so we could just do the things. Perfect. Get back, go to Starbucks because I knew we we're going to be streaming most of the week, go to Starbucks to my favorite Starbucks. And there is caution tape across the drive through and across the entry ways and a sign that says due to severe structural and electrical damage, we will be closed for, I don't remember if it said foreseeable future for the immediate future, we will be closed. So my favorite Starbucks is now completely closed because somebody ran into the building and caused massive structural damage. So I am pissed that my favorite Starbucks just got remodeled, just reopened. They they devastated the electrical box on the outside, whoever hit it with a car, and then caused structural damage to the whole side of the building. There's like a big hole in the side of it. Just so, so bummed. So I was like, good. The, does the team get to go work at another location? Or are they just, do they have to wait for the structural damage to be fixed? Because they were just closed for remodeling. I just felt so bad. I just felt so bad. Um, fellow barista here that happened a few years ago at my store and had to completely, had to again completely remodel. They they did massive structural damage. So I don't know who hit the Starbucks. It got hit at night. Nobody was injured. Um, how do you run into a building? You're probably not sober, but that's speculation. You're probably not sober, but that's speculation. They probably got relocated. I don't know if they do, but hopefully, because the other Starbucks have staff too. Emily, I'm so jelly of your Starbucks remodel. <laughs> they made it much, uh, much faster for the team. If ours would reconfigure there in out, we might actually be able to pick up our mobile orders. Yeah, they reconfigured it so that it's very easy for drive through a mobile order pickup, which is what they're doing. Um, so let's see. I don't know. I It definitely wasn't Daryl Brooks that ran into our Starbucks. Somebody ran into the Starbucks. But who runs into the Starbucks? Hmm. Pirate Dragon Turtle. Um, I think that says dragon. Yep. Pirate Dragon Turtle says probably not sober, but that's, wait, it left, but that's speculation, new album name. Yep. Or that speculation is the album and probably not sober is the band. Question, will we learn what this break is about? Not if it's a court safety concern. If they had to clear the courthouse or something, if they had to clear the courtroom, then no, we won't. We won't. So let's see. Um, some of you guys are saying you sent me an email. I'll go look at Twitter and see if we have any news reporting. But until we have any news reporting, I can't um, and won't speculate. Long crime is reporting. There were threats called in. Let's go look at what long crimes reporting real quick. Let's just go. Let's go look at what long crimes reporting because um, the court is still on break. So let's go take a look at what they're recording because I want to know what ha I want to know what's happening. I want to answer questions too. So, um, let's see. Um, well, we definitely have more. Um, let's go to Court TV. We definitely have more viewers than Court TV does. Hi, Court TV. Could you just personally tell me what's happening? This is still on break, so I'm going to go look at their Twitter because they're not even running commentary on their um, on their YouTube feed. So let's let's peek over to the to the tweet tweet on the street. 
because you know the source of all news and we can google around let's see um ticketmaster is trending of course it is that's not what we need apparently today's national philanthrop uh uh philanthropic day let's see um i am not um let's see Kathy Russin from Law and Crime is saying, here's the moment DA Opper stopped everything and told the judge we need to take a break. I'm sorry, it's important. Um, okay, but what else? Then what? Here, let's all play together. We're all just gonna, we're all gonna do it together. Oh, this did not pull up the way that I wanted it to. So let's share screen again and pull it up larger. And then we'll get back to why is that not working? All right. Let's see. We're just going to, we're all going to research together. We'll all learn together. Look, when news is coming in, when news is coming in, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Breaking news needs time. That's that. I'm just putting that out there. Everything we're looking at, breaking news needs time. I will go look at my Twitter mentions. I will. Um. Let's see. Breaking officials say they were call, uh, calls placed to the dispatch center and the courtroom has been cleared. Do not fuck with these victims. Calling in threats fucks with the victims. It just fucks with the victims. It fucks with the victims. It fucks with the victims. Leave the victims alone. Leave the victims alone. Uh, Fox six seems to, seems to know what's going on. I, I mean, they're not doing anything on their, their channel, but this is, um, breaking officials say there were calls placed here. We can retweet that Waukesha County Sheriff is here. It's unclear what the threat was, but officials are taking precautions, which means this. Oh, all of you. <laughs> Hello, Lonards. I see you. Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. All of you have tagged me. Thank you. Um, I see it, I see it, I see it. So, yes. Uh, let's see what Fox 6 now says. And if they're on air, we'll go there. Waukesha County Court, where Daryl Brooks is being sentenced, was cleared after a threat to the court came in via the dispatch center. That explains why the DAs were alerted. I don't understand why they didn't alert the court, but the DAs, um, the bailiff might have told the DA because they can reach them faster. So, leave these victims alone. All right. We're going to reporting from Fox six, Milwaukee, Daryl Brooks, sentencing Waukesha parade victims speak court cleared over threat. Le leave these victims alone. The last <sighs> rage, just uh, give three seconds of rage. The last thing these victims need is more trauma because their safety is at threat. So if you are upset with Daryl Brooks, this is not the way at all. This is absolute fuckery. And if somebody's trying to delay, it's also fuckery. Let them say what they have to say. This is how the system works. They get to speak. And they should do so without feeling unsafe. They already feel unsafe. They have been through enough. Though, I've been in numerous courthouses that have been cleared due to threats. It can be, it can be off-putting. Especially if they're clearing everybody out to the outside, but they're not sure if the outside is safe. Um, let's see. After two minors spoke to the court, the entire courtroom was cleared after it learned threats were made to the court through the dispatch center. The courtroom was cleared and Waukesha County Sheriff, the sheriff, is now on scene. The jury found Brooks guilty of six counts of first degree intent. Okay, so that's what we know. And then they add the victim impact statements here. We'll go add this to my tweet thread. I guess we don't need Chanley Painter to uh, to tell us because now we have it. Here, let's go add this. Copy link to tweet. How do we tweet? We do this. We do that. <laughs> How do we tweet better? This way. Just add it here. Um, There we go. That's just, it's just leave them alone. Um, Sarah said, whoever posted emergency group nap, literally LOL, along with your crossed arms and closed eyes. Yes, yes, we are. We are doing that. So let us go. Let us go to questions 
and answers. <sighs> Man, this is just unbelievable. Um, and now I have to wonder if they're going to break for longer in the day. I guess we'll keep looking at what local Fox News says. Oh, look, here, just on a, to talk about Twitter for a moment. Have you all been watching Twitter? Lord. Just to talk about Twitter for a moment. They now have the um, verified check mark on a profile, like the verified one. And then they have the official one. I doubt I will see the official one. I have the verified one. Um, but we will see. But now we know that this is actually Fox 6 News because it says official. They have been rolling this out badly. They have been rolling it out very badly. And what's funny is on my profile, on the computer, you will see that it is notable. Yay. On the on the um, phone, you will see that it says Twitter blue, which is wild. So all the things. All right. Well, <sighs> we will keep an eye on the court and see when they come back. We're just here now. I um I am definitely not a not a breaking news reporter, but now we're here. So now there's breaking news and we're just doing the things. The chat is asking for DEF CON Red. All right, Chad, I see you. I mean, this is high, high levels of fuckery. I think it's appropriate for DEF CON Red, and then we're going to QA. And then we will we will just continue to see what happened. So let's just let's just. Uh, a warning for those of you that are new and those of you that may have forgotten because it's been a while since we've gotten to roll the official bumper. This is a little bit flashy. The flashy ends when the music ends. So just a warning. We are going to DEFCON Red in three, two, one. DEFCON Red. I love the DEFCON I love the DEFCON Red. Luna Knight, question. I just joined the stream. Can we get a TLDR as to what happened? We all cried. There were victim impact statements. We cried some more. And then the courtroom was cleared. The news is reporting the courtroom was cleared due to a threat. Um, so that could be any kind of a threat of harm to the courtroom, threat that, yeah, any kind of threat of harm. I'm not going to speculate as to what that threat of harm may be. We don't know. And, you know, speculation, I think, can be dangerous when we are... Um, when we when we are looking at breaking news and we don't know. So hopefully this will resume at some point. However, if they're clearing the courtroom or if they are clearing the courthouse, that's gonna take a that's gonna take a while. Question from Jess. Do DAs always ask for the maximum sentence as a general rule? No, not always. Not always. So no, it depends on the case. Sometimes the maximum sentence is just not what's right in a case. That's not what's justice can be done with less than that. In a case like this, that's all that's going to be asked. So that's all. Chanley responded on Twitter. Great. Let's go look. Let's just run away to the world of social media. Anyone else's T Swift Q down? Um, L Johnson, I this is also a Taylor Swift ticket purchasing support chat today. Somebody had mentioned earlier that everything was um was paused with regard to trying to get Swift tickets. So we're just waiting for every we're waiting for something to happen today. We're just that's what we're just waiting for something to happen. Um, that's all we can do really is wait for something to happen. All right. Let's see if Chanley re responded. Did Chanley respond to me or just tweet? I mean, I don't imagine that she would have just responded to me. So, but anything's possible. So let's go see if she tweeted. We'll go find it. Um, y'all are, y'all are Twitter sleuths. It's harder to Twitter sleuth when you are the one streaming, or at least that's what I find to be true for me. And, oh, she did. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Chanley. The law nerds appreciate you. Thanks so much. Sources tell Court TV law enforcement received threats, and we are on an extended break to allow them to beef up security around the courthouse. Extended break. Thanks, Chanley. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll just communicate on social media. I can't invite Chanley into the stream. I think that her contract with Court TV probably uh, requires that she go stream with them. <laughs> Though if Chanley ever wanted a link, the invite is always open. Chanley is welcome to come in. Um, I would make her put on a hoodie. It's like she's too fancy. She's too fancy. Chanley, no, in a good way. In a good way. Always very fancy. So um, 
All right, let's keep going. Listening to the Waukesha police scanner. Well, Arlene, if they're beefing up security, we're it's gonna take that's gonna take them a while. It's gonna take them a while. So just blew my ears up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Let's see. Do the YouTube things? Sure. Chanley is our eyes and ears. Chanley's great. She is. She's she is the the stilettos on the ground. Um, all right, let's go to questions and super chats. We got time. Apparently, we have an extended break. I have a I have a snack. I have some coffee. <laughs> uh, Milo's mom, Emily, you're an ellipses lover. I can't, I can't, I can't tweet without ellipses. I, I just truly can't. So send a Twitter message with a link to a reporter in the courtroom with updates. Anastasia, great. I will go pull it up right now. I try to make sure that I don't open my DMs on stream. Oh, and Natalie Wisco shared a tweet too. Thanks, Natalie Wisco. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Thank you, Natalie. Breaking court and recess due to some threats called in. Um, I just asked Sheriff Severson, who had no comment about the situation. Of course, they have no comment about the situation. Thank you, Natalie. You are great. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for all the the tags. All right. So this is from, let's just pull this up. Hillary Mintz. This looks like local. I will say when I go look for these things, local reporting is always, um, is always some of my favorite because they know the communities and they are there and generally are there in person. So this is the beginning, the beginning of the, of the, um, hearing the beginning of the impact statements. Um, let's see. Mother of Jackson Sparks now speaking. Camera's not showing Sherry Sparks because standing next to her at the podium is her son who is a minor, which is perfect. There isn't a dry eye in the court as she describes the moment she found her eight year old boy after he was struck. Correct. Um, I'm Judge Darrow seen wiping away tears. Yep. And let's see. Second group of speakers brought into the courtroom, but the judge calls a quick break for an unknown reason. Nine children are expected to speak today. Their faces will not be shown per the judge's ruling. Good. Some talk appears to be that DA Opper saw something in the courtroom that prompted a 30 minute recess. Still unclear. That was from 22 minutes ago. Um, breaking. This is from 1018. So this was, I don't know. We're at 1032 now. Court in recess due to some threats called in. I just asked the sheriff who had no comment. So there we go. We're going to keep an eye on this from Hillary Mintz, Wisconsin, over on Twitter. So that's what it is. Carly, check your DMs, please. I mean, I'm only on my Twitter DMs, and they are, there are a lot of them. So let's see. Um, I, I see it, Carly. Let's see. This is from Bruce Harrison over on Twitter. Thank you, Carly. The courtroom cleared after calls were placed to dispatch this morning. Some kind of threats, according to the sheriff, but an officer tells me we're safe to continue business. We can expect a press release. Um, they brought in this guy to clear the building, and then there's just a, a photo of an officer in SWAT to clear the building. So thank you, everybody who tagged me in this as well. I appreciate it. Y'all, look, research attorneys, y'all are the best. So, and that's coming from um, Bruce Harrison over on Twitter at Harrison MKE, if you want to follow along. So that's what's going on. We're now in 30 minute recess, ended abruptly. Um, DA Sue Opera appears to have noticed something. Bailiff ran to the front of the court, whispers to the judge. This was right after Jen Dunn with victim's assistance read a statement on behalf of a child. Opera would not comment to me in the hallway. Nope, that's very DA. That's very DA. So they will probably resume if they've already got it locked down. It seems that... Um, uh, SWAT was is ditch dispatched. I think that's appropriate. They they might could have anticipated that with a sentencing that's being streamed where people are so angry um, with Brooks. But again, letting the letting the system work is is something people struggle with. It's hard. Um, and let's see, what else do I want to say about that? It, it's hard to just watch the system work. It, sometimes it doesn't feel like it gets it right. It doesn't feel like it's enough, but that's our system. And if we want to change our system, we need to like, you know, amend our constitution and shit, which can be done. It just is very hard. So um, for those of you that are talking about Brooks and any gang affiliation, I, I were, I'm not speculating. Um, and I've done a lot of cases. I have a lot of friends that were gang DAs. This kind of shit didn't happen in most of the LA gang cases. So I'm not going to speculate on that. Um, thank you for not speculating on that. This could be from anyone. And here's the thing. 
I liken this more to swatting, literally, than I do to anything directly related to this case. I I would not be surprised if this is some motherfucker on the internet fucking around because this is being streamed and not actually someone who has feelings about this case. This swatting tends to be a control thing of like, I can scare you. I can manipulate the system. I can cause something to happen. And while this is all streaming, people see it happening. So it ends up creating its own thing. So that's that's kind of the the where I assume. So that's where I assume this is. Um, like the fake juror on Reddit. Yeah, like the fake juror on Reddit. They just want to see that they're part of the story. Um, so that, that. I, I think that this is probably happening more because this case is streaming and less because of this case or Daryl Brooks because there was no interruption in the trial. Um, there, th those things didn't happen. So that would be my speculation. And it is just speculation. And we may never know. Let's get to super chats and questions. I keep saying we're going to. So, um, Taylor asked if I've ever been swatted. I, I am not going to answer that. So thank you for asking, but why won't I answer that? Because people don't need to know. So, and when people want attention, I don't want to encourage that kind of attention. So we won't talk about it. So, um, please tweet when the trial restarts. I'll try to remember. Let's go to Super Chats. Morning, Emily from The Jaded. My partner's sick today, but powering through at work, listening in. Do you think you could give him a shout out today? It will make his day. His name is Marvin. Hello, Marvin. We hope you feel better. Um, all kinds of shit's popping off today. Feel better. Um, Heather B says, I got to catch Emily live while I wait to buy Taylor Swift tickets. Best day ever. Hopefully you got your tickets. I'm seeing on Twitter that that my guy Viper is still waiting for tickets. Wait, is this the day where he said 20 people will be traveling to speak about him? It will either happen today or tomorrow. This is going to. We're losing hours of time, so this is going to happen more. Um, Sir. Yep. After tomorrow, no one is ever going to see you again. Yep. And he he held it in this morning. Good to see you in the chat, Law and Lumber. Just a warning to the chat. He's already hinted he's going to argue that he should be able to financially compensate the victim's statement of account. Um, just a content warning for when it comes. Uh, he he is. There is no civil compromise in this case where the defendant can pay the victims in a way that they would be compensated. This will be emotional. I'm grateful to have Lawnard support for this. That's part of the reason we're streaming it today is so we can all have a safe space. And because we need to talk about the abrupt interruption interruptions. Um, so let's see. Sherry said, hi, Emily. I just wanted to say that you've inspired me to pursue a law degree. Yay. Congratulations. Um, don't take out too many loans. So let's see. Um, Carrie says 29,000 watching and so few likes. That's all. It's okay. We get, we get into the thing we're doing and, um, we get into the thing we're doing and forget, but do the YouTube things. Emergency cuddle puddle. That's exactly what's happening. Um, good point on swatting. Thanks for answering my question. Of course, and not a worry. It's just the aircraft. At this oh. time, we have three adults who have been transported to a local hospital with non-life threatening injuries. The aircraft was uh, inbound from the southern states with 56 dogs on board. This is on Those Fox dogs 6 Milwaukee. Injured. However, they have been transported this was the court to stream. local humane society and you'll be able to talk with them soon. An aircraft with dogs And um, We did crashed. have a significant fuel spill uh, that happened with this because of the wings being removed from the aircraft during the crash. Did it spill on the courthouse? 300 gallons of Jet A that actually went into the ground and also a marsh with associated aircraft parts as well. We have a DNR on location to mitigate that issue and our fire personnel are still there's standing There's also a plane crash. Sure they said no the dogs were okay. Any issues with the aircraft itself. They said the dogs were okay. Prior to removing himself from the aircraft, the pilot was able to secure it. In other but words, be able to shut down the power. Is this near? And also hit the emergency fuel shutoffs. The court? Uh, because of the way that this particular aircraft is designed, the majority of the fuel was actually carried in the wings. 
and so that fuel Crash essentially dispersed okay. into the atmosphere during Everyone's the crash. Everyone's safe. Okay. It was not a significant issue once it came to rest. So All right, let's that, see that became a, a very good thing for the people and for the canines that were on board because it separated the hazard from the aircraft. Okay. Um, we would like to this mention doesn't have that anything the personnel to do with court. here at Western Lakes. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with court. I'm muting this because I'm seeing that Chanley Panner is on, on court TV. This is... Um, Fox 6 Milwaukee is local news. So this is local news giving a breaking press conference while court is on break. So we're going to go to a different YouTube channel and see if Chanley Painter is talking on court TV. Um, and with over 30,000 of you watching, I mean, do the YouTube things. Let's go see. Let's just, let's just go see what's happening. Uh, nope. Court TV, the court TV YouTube, I might've missed it. We can zoom, zoom a little bit and see if we missed it. But this is still on break. So unless they have another feed, I'll go look and see if they have another feed. But this one is still on break. So we're going to leave that one up. They are still giving a press conference on Fox 6 about that plane crash. Oh, today. 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 Let's see. Matt Blake asked, Emily, what are your thoughts on allowing the children to testify in this case? Should the parents have said no and shielded them from this? I think parents need to make the decision for their kid some kids are going to want to speak for themselves this happened to them um and kids kids all heal in different ways just like humans as long as kids have the emotional support if they want to talk i think you let them talk i think you let them talk so that that let's see who else is live right now and if anybody has any more um let's see we know Court TV doesn't have anything. Law and Crime doesn't have anything. Let's see. Uh, we know that Fox 6 has gone to the press conference regarding a plane crash. So that's happening. And let's see what else. Let's see who else is live. Um, so Fox 6 has an update. We'll go look at Fox 6's update on Twitter in just a second. I'm going to answer some more questions. I think we kind of know, unless somebody has an update of what time they're resuming court, because that would be most helpful for us. If we need to take a break, we'll take a break. Let the mods take a break um, and get some food. But let's see. I don't see any other live feeds on the trial that aren't commentary of the trial. All the rest of these are just on the flag. So let's see if there's anything else from court TV. Um... Let's see. No, just just the flag, just photos of the flag on every single channel. Let's see if Court TV has another feed. Nope. So I'm going to be monitoring uh, both of our streams to see when Court resumes. I'm going to leave the volume on and down. We'll go. We'll. I'll look at a Twitter update real quick, and we're going to. Um, Chanley said law enforcement was threatened. I will go look at what Chanley said on Twitter. And Miguelina, we can we can end the poll as we're well, we're filling time like you would do on live news. I guess we're not a news station, people. We do legal commentary. There's no legal shit's just happening. I hate it when shit happens. I like to respond when we have information instead of trying to pull together with the law nerds. Law nerds are are now becoming the uh, the group of uh, research attorneys in here as we're vetting through the news. So let's go to the mentions real quick. My mentions have, uh, let's see, uh, an update from Bruce Harrison over on Twitter. Worth noting, there's no serious alarm in the building right now. Everyone is calm. People here for sentencing are waiting calmly in the halls outside the courtroom. It seems like the guys in helmets and vests with long guns are present out of an abundance of caution. Yeah, the SWAT gear. So let's see what else. Um Court TV or Chanley Painter had to say, um, if anything else. I'm not seeing anything new there. Let's see if there's anything new from Court TV's channel um, or Court TV's Twitter. And they've got an official badge now. It looks like the news organizations are starting to roll out the official badge on Twitter. I'm just interested in, in keeping an eye on those things. Let's see. Um, they are talking about other trials. So no, nothing really from court TV on Twitter either. So we're just going to wait and see. 
We're going to questions. And we know there were threats at the courthouse. It's not uncommon. It does happen. And we will go from there. So the results. Um, is this your first live stream with Emily? 93% of you said no, thank you. 6% of you said yes. To the 6% of you that said yes, welcome. To the 93% that said no. Cheers, Leonard. Um, Kathy Russin says, Sheriff, to give a statement shortly. Can we just resume court? We don't need another statement. Just resume. We're getting a statement on the, well, I'm keeping an eye on both feeds and we'll go from there. If there's a statement, if there's a problem, we're going to cover it. We're just here. I mean, we're just here. We booked out the whole day to just do this. So, you know, live coverage. Let's go to questions. As I keep saying, Emily, how many times have you said, let's go to questions? I don't know. A million. Um, for the members, there's a lot of you um, who were there last night when I recorded, finally, the podcast from last night. It was very busy. Um, but we're talking about the Girardi case again with the CFO getting with the CFO getting arrested. The fuckery is so real in tomorrow's podcast, y'all. The fuckery is so, so real. Um, I'm going to try to get to as many of these. If they're not questions, I'm going to pull them up and I will answer questions when there are. Tori said, rarely get to catch you live since I'm a teacher. Thank you for your incredible work. But home today as my paw nerd recovers from surgery yesterday. Thank you for the stream to watch. You're welcome. Um, I'm sure this has got to be heartbreaking for those of you that have worked with children. I mean, have children. All of this is heartbreaking, but there's something in this case that almost everyone relates to in their own life. It's not like you're looking at this going, I, ne I don't know what that's like. Uh, a lot of us have been to Christmas parades like this where they have floats and the local, you know, baseball teams and stuff march and you've got the church groups and the boy scouts and the girl scouts and everyone else and the marching bands a lot of us have experienced that you can viscerally relate to what that will be like i'll tell you what i don't know how i'm gonna feel going to our local christmas braids this holiday season um i'm always a little bit on high alert because of the job that i did but whoo cindy can judges show emotion during impact statements they do it happens it happens that you can't I mean, I don't think the judge is going to be boo-hooing if the judge was so um, impacted that they needed to take a break, they would. But you're going to see, and what we saw from Judge Darrow, tears flow and, and a, you know, that's all you can do. It's heartbreaking. And we are human. And normalizing being human is okay. Judges are going to be emotional. Will he remain in court for the statements or will he be muted? He's remaining in court. And even though his face has been doing all the face things, he has not been um, disruptive in a way where he would get removed from court. So the Parkland judge made all his commissary money go toward restitution. Uh, she might too. Some of that's determined by local rules. We'll see. Barney cat. Thank you. Deep breath. It's okay to not hold the heaviness. It's okay. Um, DD said, thank you uh, for your delicate and empathetic coverage of this hard day for all You're You're welcome. I try. I mean, there's other than saying we need to lighten the mood, wrong answers only there's, it's, it's heartbreaking stuff, but it's very, very real. Um, they are still Lakes, but obviously talking about the, the plane crash. The pilot and All right. So that's still coverage of a plane full of dogs. Like, could you just bring the puppy plane here? Can we have the puppy plane? I'm glad everyone's okay. I want a puppy plane. Thank you for the puppy plane coverage. So we'll see. Um, let's see. Tabitha gave some gave some uh, tips for five four three two one grounding, so all of you can can use that if necessary. We're all gonna just be like, <sighs> we're gonna take a deep breath. So I mean, courthouse security is tight on any given day. I I'm just uh, I was not expecting the court to be interrupted due to threats today. Mm. Something has happened on Fox 6. Where are we going back to? Let's see. And we've got, I don't know if they're my uh, cameras are switching back. We're just going to keep an eye as they switch cameras. We'll see what happens. There's Court TV's feed. All right. Continuing on. I think the watching count stays if you have the stream muted, but the tab's still active. Just an option to use. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not, I mean, we're going to go through these, these, uh, we're going to go through these statements through every single one as they are in court. And if there's another news statement, I guess we'll see it. Um, Colin Zandi said, 
Please remember, while we appreciate being here together as a community, please know we support you. And if you need to step away, we're here. I am I am good. Um, it's it's horribly sad, but I am good. Very first super chat. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, thank you for giving us a safe place to learn and handle these tough cases. My girls and I watch every week, of course. Question from Lawnard Clips. Before we hear any statements, can we sentence him to the pain Princess Bride reference? I mean, I don't I don't even know if he has the the capacity to Princess Bride feel the pain at this point. So he is he is definitely making everyone else angry. So glad we have this community for support right now. Lawnards are the best they are. Uh, thank you for doing this hard but essential. I think it's essential too. Jay Stinger, thank you so much. The The victim impact statements have been very gracious. Have been very gracious, very strong, and very, very gracious. Coming in late, but Bailiff Poker Face is hilarious. That guy has a great poker face. The man has been an immovable mask of you will not see what's happening behind these eyes. It is absolutely impressive. Um, LA said, this is a community of truly beautiful people. I'm proud of them and gives me hope. I mean, it, I really think though the news may make it seem like we are very, very, um, divided that we really all can be humans together. So, um, accidental time traveler. I remember when this happened, it was prosecuted at my courthouse. Um, I lived in Santa Monica on fourth street when, a man drove through the promenade years later in a writing class. A victim wrote her experience. That must have been very real uh, to experience. But yes, I remember that. So I absolutely remember that. Um, Pilots for Paws is a great organization. Rescue transport flying pups all over the U.S. Glad the fur babies are safe. We are too. I want a puppy plane and I want to rename it Puppy Plane. Kind of like snakes on a plane, but Puppy Plane. Andrea, that's in all caps. <laughs> Are you yelling at me? Thank you for sending me. Thank you for sending me a super chat. Um, I sent you a Twitter DM. Please, please, please take. Okay. Okay. Don't need. <laughs> Don't yell at me in all caps. We will take a look. Um, Natalie Wisco shared another th tweet. Thank you, Natalie Wisco. Okay. Let's go back to Twitter real quick. Um, let's do this. This is the only way this is happening. Let's go back to Twitter real quick. Thank you, Natalie. Good to see you. Um, Keeping keeping me on the updates. Let's see. Waukesha Sheriff confirms the threat was made anonymously regarding courthouse safety. They have stepped up security presence in trying to track down who made the threat. Inspector I spoke with would not confirm any other details. Of course they won't. But thank you, Natalie. Appreciate it. I mean, of course they won't. Court is still in recess. Yes, court is still in recess. Deputies and SWAT have been standing guard. Yes, um... And again, I really do wonder if this is more not specific to this, not specific to this, but because of, um, because this is being streamed and just because this is being streamed, because once it's being streamed, then it, people seek attention. I don't want to give them attention. Um, let's see. Thank you. Um, so Andrea, I'm going to read your your um your DM because it's not pertaining to this case. I've flagged it, so I will see it. You can also always email me those if you have stuff to share with me or cases you want me to cover that are not about the immediate thing. My email is always the best way to ensure those get to me. DMs tend to get buried. So I will absolutely take a look at that, Andrea, and and I have flagged that so I can read it after stream. Um, I don't know about that. Shout out to my friend Deanne, who I enticed to come over and check you out. Well, my own grandma, thank you so much. Um, just heard that Taylor Swift presale broke Ticketmaster. I'm not surprised. Don't underestimate the Swifties. Don't underestimate the Swifties at all. I don't doubt that that Waukesha will, that Wisconsin will have nothing, nothing but smoke if they find who called in these threats. Nothing. Nothing. Melissa, thank you so much. I want more motherfucking puppies on this motherfucking plane. Yes. I want a fucking puppy plane too. We all need it. We all need it. We all need a puppy plane. So anyway, let's get back to super chats and questions. I'm going to go look. Um, Y'all have let me know that Chanley Painter has tweeted. Again, I will go take a look at that. We see Kathy Runson tweeting as well. Um, people are, the, the citizen journalists on the ground are sharing the updates. The sheriff is heading over to give an update 
All right, so that should be coming up soon if the sheriff is heading over to give an update. That was 16 minutes ago. So I don't know if that's going to be a press conference or if they're just going to update at the court. Let's see what Chanley Painter had to say. Um, extra security. There are now at least two officers appearing to be in SWAT with tactical gear inside the Brooks courtroom. There is also beefed up security posted around the courthouse. Sources confirm law enforcement received quote unquote threats causing an abrupt pause to court TV. So thank you all. And there was one more that I will go grab and then get back to get back to what we are doing. So thank you all for the updates. Um, so there we go. All right. Let us get back. Emotional support puppy plane. Yes. A cuddle puddle, a cuddle puddle of puppies. We want a cuddle puddle of puppies. That's what we want. Emily, are there no laws against swatting? There are laws against swatting. Um, but they are difficult. I'm not going to talk too much at length about why they are difficult because that is not the focus of my brain today. They can be very difficult to enforce. Um, Emma, thank you for sharing your, your, um, your personal experience saying I saw flashbacks on the highway. Um, I just with, they can heal. I hope they can heal too. I hope so too. I hope so too. Um, Lemon and Arrow asked, is it accurate you cannot claim that you representing yourself pro se were ineffective and issues for appeal review weren't preserved? Generally, ineffective assistance of counsel, like the lawyer didn't do this, is not available for appeal when you are pro se. So it can't be like, oh, I didn't do that, my bad. Now I'm appealing because I didn't do that. You can't because it would let people manipulate the system. So um, Randall said he is listening, hence the eye rolls and clapping. He The clapping was hard. Um Respecting chat rules, I'm still not fond of Daryl Brooks. It's fair. We can all have very strong negative opinions of Daryl Brooks. I have a very strong negative opinion of Daryl Brooks. Say three times fast, cuddle puddle of puppies. Yep, I want to take away a cuddle puddle of puppies. I think Fox 6 Local is having a press conference about this. Um, that's what we're, we're on, that their channel, and there is nothing. So I will be keeping an eye, and the chat will be keeping an eye. So for now, there is nothing. If there is something... We will um, we will hear it when court comes back in. Let me keep the volume on this real low so it doesn't absolutely blast my um, ears. Let's get back to we're going to answer some of the super chats and we're all going to wait and see what happens. So um, let's see. Is it fair? To, uh, is it fair to say that he thinks the appeal is going to make this all go away? Hence why he is so indifferent. I don't I truly can't get inside this individual's head. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just the oh, well, it's going to be this thing, it's going to be this thing. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know. Possible. Um, but he does have to do things for appeal. I think it gives him something to do actively. Um I think it gives him something to do actively. I imagine there's sentencing guidelines for each count, but does she have any leeway to give more time given his demeanor? She can only give the top of what's available for each crime, which is a whole lot of life counts plus um, a whole lot of life counts plus like 800 years. So no, when there are sentencing ranges, if a, if a case, not this case, but if a case had a sentencing range of up to 10 years, the judge couldn't be like, yeah, but also fuck you, here's 15 years. The guidelines and the legislature set if you commit this crime, the amount of time is X. And the judge can't be like, yeah, X plus, unless there's something that warrants X plus, X plus use of a deadly weapon, X plus great bodily injury. And each of those enhancements have their own amount of time. And then those things can get added or not. But if it is just a one count wire fraud and the max amount for wire fraud is 30 years, the judge can't be like, yeah, but also fuck you, here's 50. Nope. They have to stick to the law. Hopefully that made sense. Question, how does the DA and judge not ball? Um, well, tears happen. Um, reining in the balling is something that takes experience and that I was bad at. Oh my goodness, this is hard to watch. Yes, it is. Sending virtual supportive, loving mom hugs to everyone who needs them. Everyone in Waukesha needs hugs from us today. Um, Emily, how can a judge get through this without crying? Do they get special training? Judges do go to a judge school. I don't think there's enough training in the world to do this. Some people are more naturally poker face than others. Um, but but it's hard. It's really, really hard. And I don't think 
you have to not be human. It's a human system. I don't think you have to not be human. I think it would be inappropriate to be completely boohooing. Um, but I think that some of that can be controlled when you are witnessing it secondhand. And yes, maybe tears, but also the judge put her face down and was trying to be discreet about it. The judge was not me sitting there like this. You know, there is a level of discretion that is appropriate. Um, it's, it's tough. It's tough, but also human. It's, it's a very real thing to react to other people emotionally walking you through the worst shit that's ever happened to them. It's very, very human. It's very, very real. And it's, it's hard. It's so, it's just so hard. So, oh, Emily, can you speak as to why he's even in the courtroom if he doesn't want to be there? He is required to be present. He is his own lawyer and he's the defendant. So he gets to be present to hear what he's done. Um, Krista said, studying for my national EMT test. I was an EMT, a police wife, a mom of three. I had to put my dreams on the back burner. You unknowingly encouraged me to pursue my dreams and try to put some good out in the world. Next paramedic school. Good for you, Krista. Cheers. And yes, I didn't realize that this was my dream. And then I got to do it. And I was like, I love this the most. No one can make me do anything else. I'm doing this forever. Um, doing this forever. I love getting to do this with y'all. It's hard. It's hard, but I love getting to do this with y'all. I have no idea when we're going to resume doing it today, but here we are just to talk. We could all probably use the emotional recalibration. So it's just fine. It's just fine. Um, I thought it was tough, but I think I may have to take a break. Yeah. And that's fine. Everyone feel free. Um, and it's, it's okay. It's okay. You guys, it's not look it's, I don't take it personally. If I see the chat numbers fluctuate, I truly, truly don't. I truly don't take it personally at all. If you need to say, I'm taking a moment, um, do it. It's fine. Let's see. Question. Have you ever seen the poker face bailiff move that quickly? Nope. But they did. Um, Court TV says the hearing will continue at 1 p.m. That's probably right. I will get through some more super chats and then we'll take a break. I'm going to go confirm. I trust the chat, but I will go confirm that and then I'll take a break. So, yep. Elizabeth said, can the three strike rule add more years to Brooks's sentence? I don't know the three strike laws in Minnesota. I don't think three strikes would apply much here because of how many life sentences he's facing. I mean, Brooks doesn't need more time. He's getting all like his sentence is going to be all. The judge might say 800 years. The judge might say 700 years and then life and then life and then life. It's going to be plus, plus, plus. He's getting all. I don't know if it matters. Um, that would be 1 p.m. Central time. I'm going to go confirm and get through some more of the super chats and then we'll take a break. Uh, let everybody get a little lunchy lunch. Ooh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll door dash some noodles. Today's a noodle day. It's raining outside. Today feels like a noodles day. That feels appropriate. So if they are taking a break, we'll take a break. I'm not just going to sit here and stare at you. Is 1 p.m. in 58 minutes? No, in two hours. So, um, Emily, distraction. Thank you for Parthenon. You're welcome. Isn't it fucking great? The Parthenon in Nashville is amazing. And so we'll be here an hour. Um, we'll be here like a little bit before one. So I'll set the stream. Um, we'll be here a little bit before one. And then we'll hold like an emotional, uh, emotional support summoning circle for everyone trying to get Taylor Swift tickets at 2 p.m. And then we'll just do this. So we'll do that. Um, okay. Did I say Minnesota? I'm sorry. If I said Minnesota, I'm sorry. My brain is, I'm, I, my brain is tired. This was unexpected. This has kind of thrown me a little bit. I'm, I'm annoyed by it. And I'm, I'm sad. I'm, I'm DA annoyed for all of the traumatized individuals that have, that are still walking through PTSD that have been through this for a year that are healing. And then, and then another threat to their safety. I, I, I just, I'm just so unhappy for them. So, um, let's see. Let's go back to our source of all things, Twitter. A representative from the DA's office tells me they hope to resume sentencing shortly. It's been nearly an hour since the courtroom was cleared. That was 15 minutes ago. Um, so that was 15 minutes ago. Let's see if there's any updates since then. Uh, we just started several. That was 30 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see it resume shortly. Let's go see if Chanley said anything. Um, 
extra security. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if there's any official reports, but I imagine that that's probably right, that they will just resume after lunch. I would hate to say that and then, um, and then move. So let's see. The Taylor Swift queue is moving again. Congrats. Central time is two hours ahead of Pacific Standard Time. Time zones are hard for me. I get it. Um, Viking Wolf by Blood. Late to the party. Sorry, you're not late. In my green jail at the moment, um, have I missed anything important? I got, I, I'm sure the chat caught, caught you up. Absolutely. The bail of throat is going up and down as he is struggling too. I don't know how people do it. I've never had a good poker face. My face has always told you exactly how I felt about everything always. My face will always tell you how I feel. I mean, yeah. Question is Daryl Brooks's choice not to look at the victims or is he prohibited? No, it's his choice. Um, I've sat through some really heartbreaking sentencings, especially in the like vehicular, the vehicular homicides, the drunk drivings where people really did not intend to hurt anybody. They drank, they drove. Um, that was the choice. Did, and then, and then the things, which is why drinking and driving is illegal because then the things happen at a, at a rapid rate. And, um, and the defendants were heartbroken. The victims were heartbroken. The victims' families were heartbroken. Um, the it, it it's just heartbreaking. But you, there are definitely times when you see defendants that are devastated, devastated um, by what has happened and devastated by what they've done, and and truly, truly devastated by what they've done. And will look at people and also cry and apologize and 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 just really take that weight on. And then you will see other defendants who are just um, stone-faced or disassociated or trying not to process. And then you will see some that are laughing or whatever. Um, you will see some that yell threats. I'm glad Brooks isn't doing that. When did the sovereign citizen defense gain traction in your view? I've seen it my entire career at the DA's office. So I feel like it's a recent phenomenon. It's been on my radar since I became a district attorney. So I think as courts become more open to the public, the public becomes more aware, but this has been going on for well, this well predates me becoming an attorney back in 2005. I'm late. What was Brooks clapping about? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, does the impact statements gratify the offender? I don't think, I don't think so. Question. Has there ever been a case where the sovereign citizen defense worked? Not that I've seen. I, I not that I've seen. Um, Karen said, hi from South Africa. Is intentional homicide the same as premeditated murder? Homicide in South Africa is unintentional and negligent. It, Karen, the hard thing with the U.S. is that the way they use phrases in different jurisdictions can vary. But yes, generally intentional homicide is interchangeable for premeditated murder because then there is a negligent homicide statute as well. It just depends on the jurisdiction and how they write their laws. I have... I, I mean, I've not practiced outside of California, but I've looked at a lot of laws from a lot of jurisdictions, especially New Mexico lately, wonder why, and their statutes are different. Not all of them call it premeditated murder. Some call it intentional homicide. Some have both, where intentional homicide is you doing an intentional act different than a premeditated murder, different than a negligent homicide. So it really depends. It really depends on the jurisdiction. So... um. Brianna said, I bet money this is another delay tactic. I think this is somebody trying to have their five minutes. The same way they do to streamers. It's, I, I, I generally, until I see evidence to the contrary, my general default thought on all of this is, seems like a swatting. Seems like a swatting the same way streamers get swatted. That's what it seems like to me. So I have not seen, let's see if Court TV says when it will resume. Because I'm not seeing that anywhere. Um... Nope, nope, nope. Still not seeing it reported when they're going to resume. I'm going to give it till, I'm going to give it a little bit longer. Um, Court TV's pin tweet or pinned statement says, uh, sources tell us law enforcement dispatch received threats and they're beefing up security. Okay, but it doesn't say when they will resume. Here, let me go to their website. We're just, we're just finding out live together. So let's see. Um, Daryl Brooks sentencing hearing. Okay. Uh, let's see. California versus Spectre. Okay. Let's see. 
Um, no updates. So we'll just we'll just keep on keeping on for a little bit, and if it seems like they're not resuming, we will just break. I'm sure they've told everybody internally. So from the news, threats were made. We got that the courtroom was cleared. The sheriff is on scene. I'm sure the sheriff was on scene. Has the judge already written out what she wants to say to Brooks? I don't think so based on the judge's statement this morning. This is a great question, Tracy. The judge's statements this morning were that they anticipate sentencing going over to tomorrow. That might change now. Not that the, they'll be done faster, that it may bump another day um, to accommodate finishing everything, but the judge wanted time. The judge wanted time to reflect and to write their sentencing for what they were going to say to Brooks. So the judge wants time. I don't think it's, I think the sentence, I think the math has been done. The math of how much he can get, what's going to be sentenced on each count. I think all that math is probably done, but what the court wants to say, we don't know. Court is going to be live imminently. I hope so. I can't imagine them giving up a full hour or an hour and a half at this point. So we're just going to keep going. Um, Most bizarre, Daryl Brooks, most bizarre, you've seen a defendant act in court. No. Nope. I've definitely seen more out different types of outbursts. He he was the most difficult for the longest period of time. I mean, he was not yielding, but um, no, not the wildest. Court's weird, man. Court is weird. Look, if you ever if you ever have the opportunity, if you're curious, and there is a case of local interest to you, go sit in court for a day or two. Court's wild, man. Things things happen all the time. It, I mean, it's now turned into, I was going to say there should be reality TV shows about court, but you just stream what's happening in the courtroom. That's it. it you can't make up the stuff that happens in court. You just can't. Thanks for the stream. Thoughts on it. Ah, here we go. Um, I have no sound on this, but Daryl Brooks appears to be back in the courtroom. Um, so I'm going to close that. Daryl Brooks appears to be back in the courtroom and I'm going to keep this up in the corner. We have no sound yet, but apparently they're going to resume or they're going to break for the day. Either way, I'm glad we're still here. Uh, thoughts on agents going to law school. I'm a essay working national security, and I think the perspective would be amazing even if I'm not going to be a lawyer. Unrealistic. Un the only reason it could be unrealistic is the money. If your job can pay for that kind of training, there's different ways to get legal training. Um, whether it be a JD, there are some master's degrees in law where you might be able to focus just on the law as it applies to your job. But I think it's great though. I did have a few officers I work with that went to law school and then became attorneys. They were like, you know what, maybe. And then they started working in policy and policy with regard to policing and stuff. There's lots of reason to know the law better. So wrong answers only they're in a cuddle puddle. I hope it's a puppy cuddle puddle. Um, the other Sarah said, thanks for holding a safe space for us hugs. Of course, that's what we're doing. That's what we do here. It's incredibly frustrating how Brooks has tried to make the entire case about himself. I mean, just to, just to give a fair to the other side. Marlena, I get you. Just to be fair, for him, it is all about him. For him, he is the defendant. For him, he is going to prison for life. For him, it is all about him. So... I mean, for him, it truly is. It's not about the victims for him. If it was about the victims for him, he wouldn't have driven his car down a parade route. I wish someone would start their statement with, to the alleged human being, Daryl Brooks, why does he get reading material? Um, okay, it looks like people are coming back into the courtroom. The volume's coming back on. He's allowed to have a Bible, and he has to have his case files because he is the attorney. Um, when you were a DA, how did you prepare yourself and your mental health for days like this? Not well, not well. And then, and then therapy, lots of therapy and then therapy. Um, All right, thank it's you. also nice to be able to hug, hug your people, hug the people. Shortly before 10 AM, uh, there was Let's an abrupt happened. stop to the proceedings. Uh, when I was asked by, uh, the sheriff to meet with thank you for him, making a record. I was advised at that time that there communication center had received a threat to the courthouse. Thank you As for making a record. As everyone is well aware, it's now 11.14 a.m. The <sighs> sheriff has assured me that this building is quite safe. Um, very secure were his words. 
and that he has taken all reasonable measures to secure the courthouse. At this time, I am not going to stop these proceedings. We will continue, um, and I will rely on the Sheriff's Department and law enforcement personnel to advise if anything changes. I apologize for the abrupt disruption previously, um, but I'm confident that we can go forward at this time. I know. I hope they find who made that threat. I hope they find who made that threat. Right before that, Jen Dunn was uh, had been reading a statement yes, Carrie, from one of back. the juvenile victims, and there was a picture that was referenced. Yes. I would like to make a request for that picture to be made part of the record. Yes. Thank you, Judge. We had anticipated that as well. We're prepared to display that at this time on the monitor. And then will that be filed? Yes, I can file that. Written All right, go All ahead. the written statements should be filed. So, so again, this is the I like uh, that the judge gave him no opportunity. And, uh, drawing by victim KKK. Can you tell me the age of KKK? Eight years old. Eight. Thank you very much. Were you completed with that statement, Ms. Dunn? He, I am says, completed with it says car that KKK hit me. statement, and you can it now see the It says car that hit me that with an arrow to an SUV. On the bottom of his statement. Thank you very much. He's Next, eight. I do have the statement of the mother of victim KKK and LLL to read for the court. I am not sure how or where to begin to try and put into words how November 21st of 2021 has impacted my life or my family's life. That was a night that I pray I could forget, say it has not broken me, this is one of the say that I am stronger advocates. than a single moment and move beyond as if it never happened. But unfortunately, as much as I try, this is something that haunts me daily. Our lives forever changed that evening. Mr. Brooks took an evening that She's was very supposed good to be at filled with this. excitement, love, and holiday spirit and turned it into a real-life nightmare. November 21st of 2021, I witnessed the most horrific event I could ever have imagined leaving my house that evening. My children at the time of the parade were 11, victim LLL, 9, victim KKK, and 6, innocent, full of life, the victims love, are compassion, named and excitement for the holidays. In alphabetical order. That evening, Mr. Brooks stripped they didn't this from my skip. children, leaving them physically hurt, I don't know why. scared, angry, confused, Each. traumatized, and forever changed with the visions of what this happened that night. The I saw absolute staff, fear and pain in my children's services. eyes they should never have to, had to uh, experience in their entire life. I saw my daughter, victim LLL, lying in the road crying and yelling, who would do that? I saw my son, victim KKK, flipped on his back, crying in pain, not being able to move or feel his legs. I remember knowing we weren't safe and needing to leave, telling my children to run as fast as they could, and mentally knowing we needed to run, but physically feeling my body pull me back, not knowing if I am running them to safety or back to danger. I remember seeing parents laying on top of their children in fear and trying to protect them the best they could from what was happening. I remember sitting at every stoplight while, my dri while driving my children to the hospital, trembling to the point the car was shaking. In complete fear, this court every car letters. pulling up beside me was the person who hit my children. And numbers yes, would Mr. get confused Brooks, with the I counts. Remember. I watched why. my son not be able to sit alone in a room for weeks. I watched my children not be able to sit still without being anxious and fidgeting for months. I watched my children wake up with nightmares to this day. I saw gut-wrenching guilt on my husband's face for feeling like he didn't protect his family. And to this day, I feel anger and hatred more than I realized I could ever could for a person I have never even met. Yeah. But aside from all of that, I am thankful. Thankful that by some miracle, my family and I walked away that evening. Although I could not attend most of the trial in person, I did view either via Zoom or on TV. I viewed everything from the pre-trial, jury selection, and trial itself and I am disgusted that a grown man could act the way Mr. Brooks acted during all of this. Yeah, Mr. They Brooks claims he Mr. was Brooks, raised a Christian and his mother you. raised him better than he was acting at the beginning of the trial. They saw you. But Mr. Brooks continued to be rude, selfish, and disrespectful from sleeping during court, endless interruptions and outbursts, rude comments, facial expressions, and lack of remorse for his actions They've and got how your he number. was treating everyone in court. 
yep. from the prosecutors, victims, witnesses, and judge herself. I never thought Mr. Brooks could make myself or my family feel victimized all over again, but he did. Oh. I keep remembering how Mr. Brooks was upset the detective in the investigation asked to speak to one of his children. I asked myself, it's not okay to speak to his child, but it's okay to intentionally hit two of my children and drive away? That's okay? Why my children? Good. Why any children? How could someone do this? Yep. How could someone have no compassion for the victims, the families? We deserve answers. Our children deserve answers. Yes. True and honest answers. Never once did I see true remorse for anyone but himself or his family during the trial. Facts. Mr. Brooks also stated something along the lines of anyone who knows him or spends enough time with him knows he would never do something like that. But Mr. Brooks, you absolutely you did. did. Mr. Brooks hit my children and so many more people and never once stopped. Not only did he kill, injure, and traumatize so many that night, he decided to victimize everyone again by forcing them to not only testify as to what happened because he felt compelled to plead not guilty, but he also forced these victims and family members, including my husband, to face the monster that did this and answer the questions he felt the need to ask. Because he represented How can himself. someone face each person on the stand knowing what was done that night, yep. question them as if they were the ones on trial when all of the victims and witnesses were doing that night were creating memories? Unfortunately, memories were created, but not the memories I planned to have with my children. Instead, the fear I have seeing a maroon SUV driving towards myself or my family is now paralyzing. Seeing a vehicle drive too fast down any street makes me physically sick to my stomach. <clears throat> my children panic at the sight of an emergency vehicle. Seeing people run and yell unexpectedly, even if just for fun, makes my heart drop and my mind brings me back to the night of the parade hearing the screams, yells for help, and cries from that night will haunt me until the day I die. Those are the memories I have from the night. The only good that has come from this is Mr. Brooks will never be able to hurt another person outside of prison ever again. The guilty verdict and hopefully life plus sentence will protect anyone that It'll may be have been hurt plus. by Mr. Brooks in the future, and that I can be thankful for. Please, on behalf of myself and my family, we ask Mr. Brooks to be sentenced to the fullest extent. Mother of victim KKK and LLL. This Next is, to speak will be victim S. This is a victim support person. They work with the district attorney's office. They are funded. <clears throat> Sir, what? Um, I'm taking some notes, and I was wondering, um, sir, it was a little confliction there. Is uh, victim KKK it or not? Sir, are you fucking with me right now? I can't answer that, sir, but that was a written statement read from the mother. From the mother. KKK. I apologize, Your Honor. Yeah, I'm you need to sit down. <clears throat> there was there was a little bit of a conflict there. Is this victim eight or nine? A year has passed since this happened. My name's Kelly Grubbo, and I was walking in the Christmas parade with my daughter, Adelia, on the 21st. I'm not one for public speaking, obviously. I'm very nervous. But I was given a chance to be the voice You've for got my this. daughter. And, and I. That is what fueled me to stand here today. Now I can only tell you our story but i believe the tragic events of that day have affected many of us in a similar manner i can honestly say i have never felt the hatred i do for one person like i do this man and the very okay. man that drove his vehicle into my nine-year-old baby girl who was excitedly walking in the christmas parade she was so excited to dress up that day as cindy lou who we spent weeks figuring out costume her costume and picking her hairstyle she was excited to have her hair and makeup done. You've got this. And to help spread holiday cheer. To see her friends and her family that were there to be spectators at the parade that became witnesses to this horrible act themselves. So many lives were changed that day. Although many of us, for the most part, have healed physically. Emotionally, many of us have been scarred. I have questioned whether those emotional scars will ever truly go away remembering the roller coaster of emotions that day and after being struck myself lying on the ground and seeing the tires pass directly in front of my face and just waiting for the pain to begin being filled with absolute fear of not knowing where my daughter adelia was 
or if she was okay, then running only to find her the way I did, the way so many of us found our loved ones that day, lying helpless on the cold, hard ground. My knees buckled the minute I got to her. This poor thing. Seeing my child. Sorry. Don't apologize. You've got this. You're good. Seeing my child that this so-called sorry excuse for a man ran a 3,000-pound SUV into her tiny little body. There are so many times when I close my eyes, I still see my baby girl laying in the street helpless, not moving, just staring in complete shock, not even recognizing her own grandparents when they came to her side. Seeing that look in her eyes will forever be embedded in my mind. As a parent, we are supposed to be able to protect our children, and that day many of us were reminded of the ugly in this world, that no matter what we do, there will always be monsters like Darrell Brooks that are lurking around corners, just waiting for a chance to play those parts in our nightmares. Yet even after causing this much pain and destruction, he wasn't even happy with that. He didn't stop there. He took it upon himself to be his own representation, knowing full well he would be given the chance to question us as victims and rip open the wounds once again and show no remorse. I can tell you, sitting on the stand that day, reliving the horrific events, Having him look in my direction brought up so many memories and emotions of that night. Hearing his voice made me cringe with disgust and anger. He changed our Adelia that day. He stole her innocent, happy look on life and replaced it with fear and hate that no child at the now age of 10 should ever feel. Although those feelings are warranted, she was forced that day to see the ugly in this world also. And her joyous outlook on the holiday season was stolen. I'm not sure if she will ever again attend another parade, let alone a Christmas parade. I don't know when the unexplained loud noises will ever not make not take me back to that day yeah, and make PTSD me jump, is hard make like my that. heart rate increase. However, I do know every day is a new chance we have to take back our lives and give this man no more than he has already taken. We are now stronger than we ever imagined we would have to be as a family and as a community, and that we that he cannot have. He does not deserve that. What Darrell Brooks does, however, deserve is to be does deserve is to be sentenced to the maximum time allotted for each one of his horrific convictions, as he has given us as a community a life sentence of these memories. Good job, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. She got through that incredibly strong and incredibly difficult sir what you're not going to do is ask them to hurry up they went to a parade what you're not going to do oh my god the da's are going to lose their minds when you ask how the da's don't just start sobbing the rage takes over and at some point the rage just takes over with him going just speed it up no Thank you. The, the PTSD that these people, everyone in the chat who's, who's struggled with PTSD is going to recognize what these folks are saying, but you can, when people tell you the trauma that they've been through, you can see it. Um, it's, it's why I was so vocal covering other cases when you have people testifying about the worst things they've been through. You can see it, you can hear it, you can feel it. And if you haven't ever been through court like this, this is probably new and it's a lot. Um, it's okay, you guys don't need to say, I'm sorry, I have to step away, don't apologize. It's okay. It's okay to hold space and to know that these people have been through the unimaginable. And it's okay to take a step back if you need a break. Um, it's, a, it's, it's absolutely okay. So with that, we're also going to hold space for them to share with the judge what they've been through because when they're testifying it's a little different than when they're getting to narrate what they've experienced um these victims are feet very few feet away from brooks he is sitting there where this wall is back here the podium is right to the side of him they they can see his mannerisms if they're even looking they might not be looking they might not be looking and if they ever look back on this, I don't know if anybody would see our coverage, but it's why I'm pulling up so many of the comments and support. People know their community supports them, but to know 
the people watching from around the world also support them as they walk through things that we can't imagine walking through. Those of you that have been through trauma, that have been through tragedy, you know that their journey is just beginning and hopefully they can start to heal, but it's still there. So rage sometimes just makes it easier. Just rage, just, just rage, just rage. It's okay, just rage. Sometimes, sometimes the rage is just, sometimes. So with, with this though, we're also seeing the strength of this community. And I think that that is, that is an incredible thing to see the strength of a community. Um, he, you know, you get sentenced where you commit the crime and, and communities get to choose what's right for their community. It's the, it's the beauty. Yeah, it's the, we did, um, swap out of being a Republic. He didn't have a power cord, but, um, uh, no, that one might Oh, this morning's been gonna run and grab the power cord and then it, it absolute should work. Coaster. Had... Okay. There's a change between what we were using earlier and that's why probably it's not that's okay. the computer. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Okay. Y'all can take a minute. Y'all can take a minute. It's fine. Simply wait for the technology, but we will do that if you want to wait. It is fine. Whatever they need. We'd like to wait if that's all right. No problem. It's okay to make him see it. And that's okay. And that's okay. Um, hi, Emily. Thank you so much for your videos and streams. I'm a fellow neurospicy. I'm adopting this term, Amy. That is it. Neurospicy. Um, and your videos have helped my busy brain focus and finish two huge psychotherapy case studies. Big love from Wales. Big love to you too, Amy. I'm going with neurospicy from yes. now on. You may need that feedback for that. What it is. Just hit um, it's PowerPoint, so, so just hit enter. Oh, his board act isn't going to help at all. Looking back over the last 30, 358 days, some days are a complete blur. Or turn the microphone the mic. closer to you. This podium is very close to where Brooks is sitting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Katie Publiner, mother of Tyler Publiner. Thank you. Go ahead. Looking back over the last 358 days, some days are a complete blur, others are as vivid as yesterday. At 4.39 p.m. on 11-21-21, changed my life, my sons, my family, my friends, and the Waukesha community. Yeah. During the closing arguments, the defendant spoke of family. His grandmother released her statement <sighs> to the media speaking of family. Through the past 360, 300, 358 days, we have heard from the Brooks family, that the defendant has a mental illness as a reason for his decisions that evening, except the decision making goes back further than that. It seems the decision was made not to get help, not to stay medicated, etc., and said to use it as an excuse for poor, selfish decisions. My family almost lost the only son, the only grandson, the only nephew, and that was not our decision. As a parent, I have carried the guilt that I debated with my son if he had to go to the parade that day. It was mandatory for his grade. The Packers mm. were playing. It was cold and windy. I had to use a life teaching moment. He made a commitment to the band. This was all part of it. He, reluctant, he left reluctantly. Oh. I talked to him shortly after I found a parking spot downtown to make sure he was warm enough and told him the general area where I was going to look for a spot to watch the band perform. From 4.33 to 4.34 p.m., I watched the South Band march and perform in front of me. Wanted to stay home. As I was packing up my blankets and chair into the wagon, I noticed what I thought was between a 2008 to 2012 maroon red Ford Escape driving extremely fast past me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I remember making the mental notes about the vehicle, the driver, turned to a friend sitting with me, and we were both in awe. Then we heard the screams and the sounds of things being hit, like when you bump into a construction barrel on the freeway. From 446 to 458 was complete chaos, fighting the crowd of people running out of the area, screaming shots fired, trying to find my son. As I approached the intersection of Main Street and Barstow, the area went completely dark, maybe only in my mind. As I searched for my son, asking people if they knew where he was. A familiar voice behind me said, he's over here. I turned to see him laying in the street 
with his feet pointing north. First, enter your pin to unlock the device. Siri! Apologies. We had he no idea what had happened, moment. only that he was tasting blood and that his stomach hurt. Soon EMTs were there and we went for a run up and down Main Street as... You've got this. As he was being helped before they had a true plan where they were going to stage the injured. He was taken off the gurney and placed in the street to wait an ambulance. This is where we met our first hero of the journey. A complete stranger came to sit with us and help roll my son while he was vomiting blood from his injuries, help to keep him calm and confront and comfort his fears. That was the 18 minutes that felt like an hour. I remember looking around as I waited. Not too far in front of me was a very young officer so with his time. rifle standing guard. To my left were two brothers that we had known from the band and baseball. One lying on the street, clearly injured, the other standing by. I felt completely helpless as I wanted to, to go and help them. But I couldn't leave my son injured. They say everything happens for a reason, something I have firmly believed. At 5.16 p.m., we were loaded into the ambulance, as I refer to it as a little ambulance I could. While in the middle of everything, it had a coolant leak. The smell of antifreeze will trigger me forever. And you see this with victims of trauma. We a made lot. it out there to a walk, and I learned after memories. that it made another run after that before it died. <sighs> While my son was whisked away to emergency surgery, I had to start making phone calls, returning text messages, figuring out what was next. While he made it through surgery, will he make it through surgery? How bad were his injuries? After six days at the hospital, we were sent home. My athletic son. She wants to share pictures. Good for you. Tell him. Couldn't lift, over, lift our cats, pour a glass of milk, put his socks and shoes on. He has a scar almost two foot long, and as a catcher, he questioned his ability to be able to play the sport he loves, the sport that he eats, breathes, and sleeps. After missing school and work for almost two months, we were able to start to get back and work up to a full-time basis over the course of a month. One ling lingering injury brought questions if he could play ball for what would be the first full season of his high school career. COVID had canceled and shortened the prior two. April 6th, he took yep. to the field with that bandmate that was lying in the street just a few feet from us just three months earlier. As we tried to find the sense of normal in between doctor's appointments and procedures, To the process and the journey of the judicial system, we have found a new family, one that can relate to the horror, the fear, the trauma of that night, changing our lives forever. The criminal complaint had listed 62 named victims, now survivors, six that gained their wings. What it did not include were the 16 jurors that had also become victims of the defendant's actions that night while the named victims, their families, and friends had to relive that night they were experiencing it firsthand. No, sir, they're traumatized too. Mrs. Edwards' statement asks that we forgive her grandson, blaming the mental illness, not encouraging him to take ownership for his actions. She said that she lost a grandson, his mother lost a son, his children lost a father. That isn't completely a true statement. He's As they here. will be able to talk to him, send him letters, visit him, hopefully in a maximum security prison. They seem to forget there is a mother that can't kiss her son goodnight, a father that can't play ball with his son, a brother that can't fight with his brother and still be his best friend. There are three children that can't call their mother for advice, go shopping, plan their weddings, or have them 
watch over them as they reach for their dreams. Yep. There are numerous grandchildren that won't get to go to grandma's anymore, get spoiled and sent home, hyped on sugar and love. There are teenagers that had to grow up way too quickly, having to make adult decisions about their future. There are girls that may never dance again without fear, their innocence taken away by a selfish decision. There is a grandfather that cannot tell the family stories anymore. He can't watch his wife dance. These families will forever be missing their loved ones. They can't call them, write a letter, or visit them. Oh, they're staring Nothing him down. will bring back They're absolutely the son, staring him down. The mom, the daughter, the grand ma and the grandfather to these families nothing can restore the innocence lost to these to ease their fear but this community came together to lift up each other up support each other looked after those that were in their worst moments celebrated the wins along the way returning to the dance floor dancing in the streets and playing baseball the prosecution team did an amazing job representing everyone of the, of the plaintiffs in this case, thank you. The victim witness team was so caring and diligent in keeping us informed. Being whenever there was a question that came up. Pepper, who greeted us every time we Pepper came to the, the courthouse, she put a smile on everyone's face, brought a little humor or a caring snuggle. You can do the last one, Tom. Okay. Your Honor, you are the standard that should be set across the country. Your patience, your diligence will never be forgotten. From the self act selfish actions of one person came to a community, came from a, excuse me, from one selfish You're actions good. Of one person came a community rising like a phoenix, stronger than ever, stronger together. I ask that you hand on the maximum possible sentence without parole all. in prison so Just that everyone all. in our Waukesha strong community can heal, remember, grow, and never have to look back. So the victim's assistance. Yeah, if you just... oh, we'll keep everybody in the loop. In this case, it's a lot of people, but they also walk them through the court process. They sit with them and hear their stories. They, they are, they are part of the support people, um, and are just tremendously strong. It, they really are the liaison between the court system and and victims of crime and help them. I'm Tyler Pudliner, uh, victim O. And help them. Get Your Honor, it. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today and share my impact statement with the court. It has been a long time coming, but I cannot thank the courts enough for giving not only myself, but all of us who have been affected the opportunity to share our stories. First, I would like to start off with you, Judge Doro. Thank you, Your Honor. We have all been going through these proceedings for almost a year now, and it is almost hard to believe that this is the first time that we've gotten the opportunity to communicate with you directly. That's true. I understand now that this is how the process takes place. Now, since the beginning of these proceedings, I've obviously gone through a lot of emotions as having been a victim and survivor in this case. I hate to say it like this, but it seems that, that for a greater portion of the year, and especially throughout the most recent proceedings, and my mother can confirm this, I've been somewhat angry towards you, Judge Doro. And I would now like to apologize for that. She's been too nice. Maybe it's because I either did not understand or did not want to become aware of how lengthy the process was. There have been multiple occasions where this I have gotten fast. very mad or annoyed due to your rulings that either didn't go the prosecution's way or that I personally felt shouldn't have been made. Obviously there are also multiple occasions where these disruptions that would continuously be, continuously be made by the defendant would take up way too much time and cause way too many delays throughout the trial portion of these proceedings. We feel that would you. stress all of us out more yep. than we should have ever been to we say We feel the least. you, sir. Yep. I would keep asking my mother, other families involved, the prosecution, and wit victim witness teams, why can't Judge Duro do more to stop the disruptions? Why did she let that one testimony go oh, on for he's way got longer than it should have? But in all thanks to those amazing people sitting behind me, I was able to get the clarification and understanding that I need to calm down and help me understand that we were making steps forward in the process. And I wanted, and that we were going to finally arrive at the finish line as winners. 
That's why I wanted to start off by thanking you for us today, Judge Doro. I am very glad that we have finally arrived at this point in the process where I can say that you did an amazing job throughout the entire process. You have not only shown myself or just the court, but an entire nation and world, um, for, that, for that matter, that you conducted these proceedings with the utmost respect and decorum to all of the parties involved. Sometimes too Lastly, much. Your Honor, I want to acknowledge your sainthood. Your devotion to this <laughs> trial can never be matched. Your fair rulings, passion for this case, and kindness to everyone is more than everyone could have asked for, and for that, I again thank you. You have truly become like a mother and a true hero to this community, and, that we, and for that, we appreciate you, Judge Doro. I would also like to thank this amazing prosecution team, Sue, Leslie, Zach, Tom, Christy, and Ryan. You guys have been the glue that has held us together throughout this entire name. process over the past year. You've all taken extra time out them. of your day to stay late and either be able to answer all of our questions or just talk and reassure us that even though with all those sleepless nights and countless hours of delay, we would be okay. I can confidently say that I don't think there could have been a better team put together to represent us as the plaintiffs in this matter. Just like Judge Doro, all of you have shown the passion, blood, sweat and tears and extraordinary effort that has been poured into this case to give us the justice that many have desired and deserve. Consider yourselves true heroes to this community as well. I would also like to highlight Jen and her extraordinary team at Victim Witness Assistance. Again, a group of truly amazing people that I can't say enough words about to describe their amazing work. If we needed a shoulder to cry on, they were there. If we needed to make that late night phone call to get the answers we desired, they answered. We can truly not thank you guys enough for all your hard work and unmeasurable amount of effort that you gave us during this case to our families. And you cannot forget about personally my favorite employee in the entire courthouse, Pepper. Pepper. You know how they say a dog is a man's best friend. Well, Pepper is an entire community's best friend. I personally, and I'm sure that I could speak for all of us when I say this, could not be more thankful for all the donations that have been made, or have made Pepper possible. Jen and her staff have done an amazing job keeping her in line while she did what any dog does best gives us so much unconditional love that for a split second, you feel like all the problems are gone. Once again, I cannot thank everyone who represented us as the state of Wisconsin. You guys did one hell of a job throughout this process and have truly become a special part of this group. We love a little shade. Um, finally, I want to take the time to describe how the events that occurred on November 21st, 2021 have affected if my family and myself. If anyone's arguing for support dogs in your court no one thinks, just clip this um, for your presentation. Something like those horrendous acts committed by the defendant on 11-2021 will ever happen to you. Christy, if you could please. I want you to look at that, Mr. Brooks. It matters. That's Mr. what you did to me that night. That's us in the ER waiting. Oh, warning. I remember bits and pieces, but that is what happened. If you could go on to the next slide, please, Christy. Throughout the past year, I have become very close to other families involved in this matter. All the pictures there have what kept me going. The sport of baseball and all the other families affected in that community. I've gained more little brothers than I can say and an entire new baseball team to live out the, the rest of this life with. Next slide, please. I've also met so many new friends post 11, 2021. A new grandmother to add to such a wonderful family. Pepper's the a support new, Another dog. new brother in that instance yep. that have just helped me get through everything. And it's kept us stronger through the whole process. Next slide, please, Christy. I've also gotten to become closer to other groups that were affected. Last Saturday, I marched with the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies in their Christmas parade. Veterans Day. Uh, Veterans Day parade, yeah, my bad, <laughs> sorry. Um, coming together with other groups like, like this Veterans is something Day. that has, again, shown that we are very strong. We are stronger than the defendant, and we are an entire community that has shown that strength. These memories are what have kept us going and will forever keep us going He's in this process. looking at the defendant. Next slide, please, Christy. I as appreciate I stated him before, saying we are stronger than you. Um, baseball is a sport that has specifically kept me going. Wrestling is another love. I've gotten to meet some very cool wrestlers, uh, Braun Strowman, to name a few, or, and Ric Flair. Um, a race car driver, Ooh. a local race car driver that I pit for at Slinger Speedway has basically been another grandfather throughout this entire process. He spent every day with us at the hospital for the week I was hospitalized, except Thanksgiving. Um, I've gained another brother who's pictured there at that wrestling event with another part of my truly amazing and big family that I've gained out of this. Christian Yelich, a brewer, and my favorite player and now manager of the Brewers Trade Council. I love that his highlight the is the slide. community that he's gained Finally, through this tragedy. This right here, this is me and my buddy Eric. We were both affected that day, 
and we made the return within three months of everything happening to come back and play the sport that we love. We did not stay down. We did not cry. You know, didn't let it get to us. We came back stronger than ever. Yeah, we might have lost, but we played hard and truly showed this entire community that we are stronger together. And we are stronger than you. I just want to uh, also it again. address one more thing to Mr. Brooks. These are um, two quotes that have gotten me through this entire process. You can mark it down in your Bible if you want for this one. <laughs> it's Romans 12, 21. Fair. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The second one, also to go with his grandmother's statement. I picked it up from the book and movie The Shack, written by William P. Young. The quote is, Forgiveness in no way requires that you trust the one you forgive. Forgiveness is not about forgetting. It is about letting go of another person's throat. And I do want to acknowledge that I am letting go of your throat, Mr. Brooks, but I have not forgiven you. Thank you, for your, thank you Your Honor, for the chance to speak today. He just did the thing. Look, get it, man. He's got flow. Oh, the condescension. <clears throat> Snaps for a victim, oh, oh. I love that he highlighted community. I love that he highlighted the community that they've gained. I love that he highlighted how they've recovered and how they've come together. Hello. My name is Sasha Catalan. Oh. I was 17 years old when the Waukesha Parade Sasha. incident occurred. I was in my last year of high school thinking it was going to be the best senior year ever. Although I pushed through and made it to the end, it definitely was not easy for me or for any of us of that. After that, one night, that changed our lives. I was in the Waukesha South marching band as a clarinet player. How am I doing now? That's really hard to answer. The band kids are gonna break because me. Because some days I get scared to leave my house. That's okay, Especially babe. now since the holidays are coming around. Yeah. Even when it's the simplest holidays, my mind always finds a way to go back to that parade incident. Since that, that day, sucks. I don't really know how to act on many events, whether good or bad. What I mean by this is that I don't really know how to show my emotions as much anymore. Before, I used to open up and could easily be read as a book. But now even my mom wonders what goes through my head, and honestly, I wish she knew. But I know that if I were to tell her, she'd be worried for me. Which is the last She's thing She's going to worry anyway, Sasha. You've got this, girl. Sometimes I think of what-if situations since that day. That if I were to take the place of one of those people who have passed, if she it would have been She is no better. longer a minor. Although I am grateful to That's have received the chance to continue and to make something out of my life for the better, I get haunted by these thoughts. I used to never think this way, which scares me the most. Not sure whether to live actively and freely, like as if nothing ever happened, or to watch my back on the slightest things. At school, I sort of didn't want to receive any help for those from those who offered not even my boyfriend, which hurt the most. Everyone hated me saying, hated me saying, struggled to pick up and carry my books and binders, even carrying my backpack just over a shoulder. I wanted to continue as, norm as normally as I could back at school, but that was never gonna happen. I've never felt so weak like that before in my life. I felt empty and I cried. Yep. It was hard to carry those books and everything, so I gave in and let those, including my boyfriend, help me out. Even the basics are hard to do, such as write. Either my hand shakes a little, or I would have, or I would have to use a clipboard for support. Even now, then, my shoulder would pop along with my elbow if I were to simply stretch. I have to relearn how to play my favorite sports, especially soccer, when it came to kicking the ball, since I was injured on my right side of the body. I tried to learn to be a lefty, but it was hard. So I decided to heal and to not give up even with the pain. She's like, I've got this all switched sides. Right. God, I love teenagers. To this day, 
It's hard to sleep because sometimes I do dream of that incident. I wake up sweating from my head with a slight fever. I instantly wake up and try to calm myself down as my heart starts to race. I have to hug something instantly to feel that I am not alone and that I am safe, such as stuffed animal, sweater, or blanket. My family has been even more worrisome and strict to me, even though I am an adult now. They instantly want to know everything I want to do. We have Just, trust. They're always going to be your parents. Priest, my mom has been nonstop talking about me possibly getting into a car crash or her never finding me <sighs> or something because I didn't aware her of a last minute plan to go eat or to simply go to a store. Yeah. I understand I never want her to worry, but at the same time, she shouldn't have to be thinking of such situations. I want to pursue what makes me happy and to not have limits on myself or to feel not as confident because my mom would say that I'm better off with this since I'm safer. My life has not been easy and I've accepted that it won't be as normal as before. All of this, I still struggle to this day. Yeah. I just keep moving forward, but I don't know when the nightmares will go away, when I will be completely healed physically and emotionally, having those reenactments of seeing my friends in the band scatter or those on the floor. Yeah. I just wish, I just wish that day never happened. Definitely not the adulthood I thought I would be having now, <coughs> considering I do not know what to go in for college. This is due to me having now an interest in the medical field or law school because of the Prairie tragedy and wanting to have justice served for everyone in this community. You've got it, girl. This is how I am to this day. Definitely not the same Sasha as I once was before. I may be stuck finding myself for a period of time, but I am trying my best to not let the incident that, affect us, that affected us all to get the best of me and define who I am and to define who we all are. Thank you. You've got this, Sasha. Yeah, the judge sees all of this. And I have a statement from Sasha's mother to read, and then I have three more statements from members of the Waukesha South Band in this group, Your Honor. This is group two. This is one of the victim uh, impact representatives. There are four Judge groups Doro, of victims. I want to express in this letter my feelings since the day of the accident, so she to speak. She has been so great. My daughter at that time was a student at South strong. High School and a member of the band in which some members, including her, were struck by the truck causing injuries. Since that day, I cannot get out of my head all of the screams of pain, anguish, and terror that were heard along that long street with no end in sight. Yeah, the Young children, go elderly people, and relatives running to protect themselves. I had mixed feelings, and even worse, my daughter was in the hospital with a lost look and without understanding what had happened. There have been months yeah. of uncertainty, of sleepless nights, nervous breakdowns, and foolish thoughts. What hurts me the most is seeing how my daughter has completely changed. From being a girl who wanted so many things for her future, to see her now so quiet, so distant, and still so stunned with many questions, and so many others. The hardest thing to hear is that she would have preferred to give her life for that of some other person who lost their life. For me as a mother, it is very difficult to be able to tell her that everything will be fine when at the time I was not behind not her sure. to protect her from everything that happened. I know that many will say overcome it already, but nobody knows what it's like trying to stand on your feet when your world has no floor. I hope justice is done and I am thankful to each and every one of you who has not left us alone policemen, doctors, prosecutors, angels, and all of those people who I could not name who were and are still here to support us. This is just the beginning for many of us and it will be a long road, but I am sure of one thing and that is that we will be able to get back up. Thank you very much. Waukesha, let's hug very tight because our children need us. Mother of victim I. I think the entire world that's this watching this one, is sending hugs to Waukesha. They sent us some photos this morning. So many of these statements are of community, of love, and of support. And it's, it's, are you ready? It's really incredible to see as people are talking about their grief moving forward together. 
which not all victims have. Thank you, Judge Doro, for your patience through this trial. Thank you to the entire prosecution team for being so well yes, prepared Darryl, for this they case. Appreciate the and judge. lastly, thank you to Victim Witness Assistance for looking out for all of us. Oof. My name is Donald Teagues, and I am the father of victim Q, or Eric Teagues. Both of my sons, Eric and Tyson, were marching with the Waukesha South Marching Band in the 2021 Waukesha Christmas Parade. Eric was a junior, and Tyson was a freshman. They were there to play Christmas music for the people and start off the holiday season. That came to a quick end when you, Darrell E. Brooks Jr., drove through the parade killing people, injuring people, and ruining what was supposed to be a beautiful event. And we haven't been told when to do the photos, so Christy, if you can use your judgment, thank you. There's going to be more photos. Darrell Brooks, you hit and ran over Eric along with some of his bandmates. Tyson, his younger brother, was just feet away from Eric when you hit and ran him over. Tyson witnessed his brother getting hit and ran over along with other bandmates. Tyson never left his brother's side during this incident. He even took off his jacket to help keep his brother warm while he laid in the middle of the street. He then had to call his mother and try to explain what had happened. As he stood next to his brother, he saw blood coming out of his ear, nose, and mouth, and his leg that was pointing backwards. He would just keep telling Eric he will be... Oh, the internet. This is the court internet, not me. Sorry, and that mom was on her way. Wife and I could not be there for Tyson the first few nights because we were with his brother in the ICU at Children's I'll Hospital. I'll answer that at a break. My daughter, who wasn't at the parade, but went with her mother to the parade after Tyson called. She stayed with Tyson at the scene and at home when, she couldn't, when we couldn't be there. She needed to see a psychiatrist to help her deal with what she saw on the streets that day and seeing her brother lying there on the ground everyone not knowing if therapy. he would live. Yep, everyone. She had to be in outpatient care All. for two weeks to help her through what she saw. Eric was an aspiring baseball player for the Waukesha South baseball team and a select baseball player for Styx Academy. He was making his final push to get better and wanting to be scouted by colleges to play in college at an elite level. You took that away from him that November day. He spent nine days in the hospital. Three of those were in ICU. Eric suffered from a skull fracture, a major concussion, a C4 fracture, right shoulder fracture, four broken ribs, a partially collapsed lung, T6 through T11 fractures, and a left femur fracture that required surgery. He is lucky to be alive. Yep. The C4 fracture could have killed him. The femur fracture could have killed him, or the broken ribs along with the lung collapse could have killed him. His time in the hospital was very hard, dealing with nonstop pain from you hitting him and running over him like he was a speed bump. He had to lay flat for four days and wear a C collar for seven days because of the C4 fracture. He had a chest tube to drain the blood off of his lung for, so he could breathe. He had to undergo surgery to repair his severely fractured femur. On top of all that, he was dealing with a severe concussion. He could not have any lights on or loud noises. He would have events of uncontrolled vomiting and would spike fevers. When he was finally able to leave the hospital, it was in a wheelchair and he was in that wheelchair for over a month. We had to have a wheelchair ramp built for when we came home. Without the ramp, it would have been very hard to get him in and out of the house. My wife had to take off a month of unpaid leave from work. I had to take off three months from work to take care of him and get him to multiple doctor appointments a week. Darrell Brooks, you stated during this whole trial that you are a man, a God-loving man. And that you your are not. Is clear. A real man would have stopped when they saw they made a mistake. A real man would have admitted the wrong and would not have put all these families through this pain. A man of God would have stopped, admitted to his wrongs, and asked for forgiveness. You sat there showing no emotions for what you did and pretend that reading the Bible was going to help you. But you, Darrell Brooks, are pure evil that is not fooling anyone. You don't know God, but you better start learning because where you, were, where you are going, you're going to need to start praying a lot. You don't deserve to see the light of day ever again. You should never be able to see your children again. It's too bad this state doesn't have the death penalty because you would be put to the front of the line. I hope you rot in hell, have a miserable existence in prison, and that someone teaches you a true lesson in asking for forgiveness. And this, I think, is why it's better that a lot of the statements have not been aggressive the towards next him. The statement Because he will get aggressive back. But these are the victim impact statements being from read. Victim, 
each. For the victims that did not want or could it's not It's been nearly speak. a year since the Waukesha Parade incident, Important. and I know my friends, family, and myself still remember it vividly. Personally, I have an injury that could affect me the rest of my life. Doing normal things like carrying groceries or even my school supplies to classes She's doing an excellent have proven job to be more of a challenge compared to what it used to be. And some mornings I'm not even able to lift my arm past my shoulder. She's incredible. It's hard, but I'm living through it because I refused a long time ago that I would have this man, someone who thought of no one and nothing past the incident, control what I can and can't do. I can't remember vividly what happened, just pain sparking up from the back of my head and my shoulder and people standing over me. It wasn't until I woke up the next day after everything and tried to stand up did I realize how much pain I was truly in and it only got worse the following days. My progress in what I can do with my injuries over this difficult year has been positive. I've rebuilt most of my strength, but I've been told time and again from my family, friends, medical professionals, it may never be what it used to be, and to remember that this may be it. This is but that's job, only a possibility though. to me. Nothing is set in stone. So. Medicine is a practice because we never have all the answers. I was lucky to have family and friends who could help me physically, but nothing was permanent. All it took was a single thing to throw all progress out the window. If I wake up lying on my side, I already know that that day is going to be painful because simple things like sleeping hurt. Emotionally, the only constant support I've had is that of my friends and family. I've chosen out of my own free will not to see medical pro professionals for my mental state because I hold the belief that therapy is great and can do many great things for people. Point, but what I do here and now has a bigger impact on myself. Putting a pause on my life to think about what happened to me and the people I know isn't worth it. I wake up at least twice a week to terrors of what happened, seeing and feeling the same things as that night and the days that followed. The endless possibilities of what could have happened, not just to me but others, whether well, I knew them incredible. or not, flood my dreams and scare me to my core. I remember my parents the day after. I had been dead asleep all night from stress and finally running out of adrenaline to find out that they hadn't slept. My father chose to stay up in the living room where I had been sleeping to watch over me instead of recuperating himself. I may not have completely understood then because I didn't want to, but after a year of dealing with the outcome, I understand. Being who I am, I hide what I'm feeling a lot. Right after the incident, I remember friends coming up to me and seeking comfort, to which I had no problem with, but there would be triggers in what they would say that would bring me back. But I pushed it away to comfort others. Humor is the world's medicine, and like most traumatic situations in my life, I've apl applied humor to this now. I'm sensitive to who I'm with, but when talking, I try to think of something witty or humorous so that I can jump over the obstacle or burden of trauma, and to put it plainly, sadness. I want the end of this letter to be, <clears throat> This past I am homecoming, the state. my friends and I had gone to the dance, and one of my friends was driving us to eat afterwards. The place was on the far side of town, and the quickest route was through downtown. It wasn't their fault at all, but we were stopped because a group of people were crossing the road and it was right near where I was hit, and I panicked. My vision went blurry and I had flashbacks of the night. My friends had noticed and helped me through it and we found a better route. I can't remember a time before having that bad of a panic attack where it's hard to breathe and knowing the reason oh, behind it is just thing. another reminder I won't be the same, much like most people who were affected. During the time of the trial, I've stayed away from news on what's happening. I've overheard conversations Probably with family members. Sometimes it's brought up within my friend groups, most of which have chosen to be understanding of my choices and move away from the topic. Mentally, this past month, I've had more terrors, not always while I'm sleeping, but when I zone out at school or at home. I never show a reaction because I choose to keep that in, but I do change in how I stand or sit, and I notice I'm more jumpy around people after experiencing these terrors. Hearing about what happened within this case has been a stressful time for everyone in my family. Yeah. I tend to not sleep as well as I normally do, even on good nights, and I find myself panicking over small things such as schoolwork more than I ever have. Oh, they're not Thank small you, when you have PTSD. <laughs> they're not small things when you have PTSD. They're just and not. And the final statement from the band is from Victim K. At the time of the Waukesha Holiday Parade, I was your typical t carefree teenager. As a 17-year-old at Waukesha South, I had only just begun my senior year, a time that some might argue to be the best year of high school. And these kids Sadly, that all changed in a mere instant. To I was marching in the parade with the Waukesha South band, playing the sousaphone, 
parentheses tuba, when Brooks <laughs> appeared out of nowhere, plowing into me from behind. That's such he a dragged both me and my instrument upon the hood of his vehicle for what seemed like miles, before eventually running me over entirely. Luckily, I was swiftly rushed to Waukesha Memorial Hospital by an officer via squad car for emergency treatment. I was completely alone during this time and positively terrified. The ER medical staff was utterly shocked that I had even survived such a forceful impact. I suffered multiple injuries due to the impact, including ligament damages, deep tissue contusions, and both a sprained neck and ankle. Post-evaluation, the doctors explained to me how my instrument had likely saved my life. Saved my life. Those words still echo loudly in my head. While my instrument may have helped to protect me, my life as I knew it was entirely destroyed by Brooks that evening. I spent several weeks on crutches, then followed that up with multiple braces. I felt completely disabled as I was unable to walk or even move without constant pain or assistance from someone. Outside of the injuries I sustained, my entire body ached for several weeks and I felt like one giant bruise. This lengthy loss of mobility ultimately resulted in the loss of my only employment, my part-time job. However, despite my injuries, it was the sheer horror of the events of that night coupled with the unwanted attention after the parade, which sent me into a downward spiral of misery and depression. Oh, this poor kid. Everything I had experienced and continued to deal with had eventually caused me to lose all focus. So no, I fell behind I think he's trying to figure out what he's doing. I simply gave up on my studies and school entirely after the accident. I hated all of the extra attention it brought. Consequently, I was not able to graduate on time with all of my closest friends and peers. That was one of my lowest times, which of course only added to the darkness and depression I was already trying to navigate through. Any physical injuries that my body sustained as the result of this crime do not begin to compare to the mental massacre I have been forced to battle every day since then. Yeah. My dreams have been assaulted by the images of that night. Bodies were strewn everywhere. Victims were sobbing and crying in pain and fear all around me. My horrific dreams have all but forced me into a constant and a chronic state of insomnia. I have been unable to enjoy any form of restful slumber in nearly a full year. Oh, that sucks. I also cannot bring myself to revisit the downtown Waukesha area at all. I become completely stressed even being near the area where I was hit. This is disturbing on a very personal level. My mother is a Waukesha native born and raised. She would often reflect upon her love for this town, the events and parades, and the community as a whole. Our family used to spend so many days together in the downtown area, but not now. Now I become physically ill just considering going downtown, and it hurts to know we can no longer share those special family moments together. In addition, I now suffer from panic attacks in any crowded public settings. So I cannot not? even enjoy a simple sporting event or concert because I have developed a hypersensitivity to screaming crowds. Yep. They send me into a complete panic, putting my head on a swivel, and always watching for danger. The PTSD and hopelessness that I continue to suffer as a result of that November day continues to be an ongoing battle, warranting decades of therapy. Mr. Brooke is sheer evil in its vilest form. He should never again know any sense of freedom. I hope that the rest of his days are haunted by the videos, images, and stories shared by each and every victim. I hope every night his dreams are teeming with visions of those six innocent people who perished in the wake. I want him to suffer like all of us has, every single day until he takes his very last breath. His refusal to accept any responsibility for his actions deserves no less. I would strongly urge the court to extend the firmest sentencing possible for every single guilty charge. On behalf of myself, my family, all of the victims, the dearly deceased, and all of Waukesha, please issue Brooks the maximum penalties possible. Victim K. That is the end of this group. <clears throat> there are two more groups right, thank you. of impact statements. You know, we had about an hour or so break, but it, I do think it's also important Time that to take a lunch break. staff and everyone here get a Takes lunch a break. break as well. So we will break for an hour-ish. Uh, I'll plan to be back here at 1.15. Okay. Right, thank you, everyone. We are in recess. So we're going to resume at 1.15. We will start streaming about five minutes before that. Um, I was ready to not talk for a minute. The the Look, I was in band. I marched in Christmas parades. My kid was in band. My kid is in band. It's just you feel it, right? So 
I think everybody needs a little bit of a break. We've seen we've seen the victim impact statements be read, and that's for those that choose to not come into court but still want their words to be read in court. Others could choose to have statements just given to the court. Um, others can choose to be in court. The victim impact um, woman who's speaking, they generally work through the DA's office and work with the victims, and they help do everything from taking helping with the victim impact fund that the state has to take care of funeral expenses, keeping them apprised to court, having them come in and talk through what the days in court are going to be like. The amount of support that they offer is absolutely tremendous. Um, and they are needed. If anyone has an argument for why there should be service animals in court, I think some of these victim impact statements show how much the service animals helped people process and, and why um, service animals are are so needed in courts where courts are reluctant for them. Not all courts are reluctant for them, but some courts are. So with that, we're going to get through a few more of the super chats and a few questions, and then we will we will we will all take a lunch break and then reconvene here for another afternoon of victim impact statements. There will be a new stream. Um, thank you, Buttercup, for translating times into times. It's very much appreciated. So an hour from now, we will be reconvening. It's just, it's a lot and it just, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot and it's it's heartbreaking. And then it's so frustrating to see him just be like, your honor, there's a discrepancy. Was that victim eight or nine? Sir, no. What I imagine is going to happen the rest of today when we reconvene and I'm less puffy, unlikely, when we reconvene is that we're going to get through the next two groups of victim impact statements from the DA's office and then the DA's request for sentencing, which will probably be brief. With that, we will get into the defendant's statements tomorrow. Do we know what the maximum sentence could be? It's like 860 some odd years plus like six consecutive life sentences. So all, the maximum life sentence is all. Um, tomorrow, we the defendant will have an opportunity to speak. Okay. And members of his family, friends, or whoever will have an opportunity to speak and ask for mitigation or ask the court to not sentence him to life. So that is what we will likely see tomorrow. And then the court will sentence him. The court will take, it will probably take, God, it'll probably take an hour and a half, if not more, to get through sentencing for each and every count. I think tonight I will try to print out a one of the complaints to go through, she is going to have to announce a sentence separately on every single one of the 70 counts. So the court will go through each count. The court may make a statement before sentencing um, or after. I imagine she will do it before and say, and th this is my sentence, and then go through each and every count. But that's going to take quite a while because she is going to have to read each charge and then pronounce the sentence for each charge. So it's going to take time. Yes, when they um, when they originally set the schedule on this, the court had set for the afternoon tomorrow only. We will see at the end of the day today what they will decide to do. If if the hour break um, if the hour break will cause a problem or not. Um, wise angel, I wish I could. I'm allergic to cucumber. <laughs> So it actually makes it worse, which I learned because I tried to cucumber. I'm, it's so ridiculous. C cucumber, tomato, and a few other things. It's, it's dumb. My allergies are dumb. That's how I feel about it. So, um, Brandon asks, have you seen a judge cry during victim statements? Yes, but normally it was through my own tears. Uh, can he talk back at the victims when he, it's his turn to talk? He, he can. I mean, I don't know if he will, um, I don't know if he'll address them, but he can. He has a chance to make a statement whether anyone will choose to be in court for that or whether they will scream at their computer screens or TVs from home is, is their choice. He can turn around and look at them if he wants. He could look at them now if he wanted to. So the, the, there are parts of court that are so very, very difficult. We were talking, was Runkle was talking about this. I don't remember which stream was talking about how there are times that um, victims of particularly either sensitive crimes or young victims could testify 
behind a screen where they could not see the defendant. Um, the U.S. Constitution does not allow for some of those things because of the right to confront. And so court can feel dehumanizing at times for both defendants and for victims. Um, and the victims are, especially when somebody's pro per, they have to be questioned by the person that they think did the thing. It's awful. It's just awful. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, the mods are telling me we're almost at 273,000 subscribers. Well, thanks. If you're watching and you're not subscribed, go ahead. Questions. Why do the victims have letters? So some chose to write statements and have them read by the victim impact support person because they either did not want to or did not or could not or would not read them in court and they wanted to have them read so the defendant would hear them versus just submitting them to the court. Some will just submit them to the court and say, this is my experience. I don't need to say shit to the defendant, but your honor, I want you to know how this impacted me. Some want the defendant to hear it and some want to stand up in court um, with their whole chest and say what they can. And we've seen some of them fighting to do that um, through, through stress and anguish and fear and really fighting to have their voices heard. And I, I just give them so much credit for that. Amy Diaz, can the judge consider his behavior in sentencing? Yes, except I imagine the sentence in this case is just going to be all plus all plus all. I imagine the judge will comment on it in her statements. I would be surprised if she didn't. Um, Daryl Brooks pats his chest when he feels for the victims, but interesting only towards victims who don't directly attack him. Um, I, I don't know what he's doing. I don't, I truly don't know what he's doing. The, with the, there are times I'm just like, we are trying to breathe. I don't know what he's doing with the like respect. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. The fact that Daryl Brooks is stone faced or rolling his eyes at all and never shows remorse. It is very difficult. And we saw that. We saw him very emotional in his opening statement and closing statement when talking about himself. How can they force Brooks to be there? He's the attorney. And the defendant, he doesn't have to be there. I mean, if he refused to come to court, they would have done this without him. He wanted to be there. Um, what if he had just played, uh, paid there and refused to get up? If he had refused to leave, they would have just done it without him. So um, let's see. Do you know how someone becomes a victim liaison? It sounds like deeply hard, deeply rewarding work. I imagine it is deeply hard and deeply rewarding. I would contact the district attorney's office in your local area or go to their website and ask them what the requirements are. They will tell you they always need people um, uh, to do victim impact work. Always, always. Um, Amelonix asked, do you hope or fear the victims possibly watching this stream? I don't, I don't fear it. If anyone does or anyone related to them does, I hope they see the outpouring of love and support for them. I don't know if, I mean, I hate rewatching myself. I don't know if any of them would want to rewatch themselves, but I hope if anyone connected to them sees that they see the outpouring of love. I'm proud of the law nerds. Um, would you be proud to show them the outpouring of love both from yourself and law? Yeah, I'm proud of the law nerds. I am always proud of this community. I am proud of the way this community shows support. I am proud that this community doesn't mock people, doesn't mock their looks, that this community is so supportive and compassionate. I am always proud. And I was proud during during every live trial we've streamed to see people um to see people find a place to have conversations and and walk through hard things with compassion. And I know during Depp v. Heard we had witnesses in the case that did depositions watching our stream while their depositions were playing. And I am tremendously proud that what they're gonna see is people talking about their testimony and not ripping them apart as humans. Because the internet, the internet has plenty of room to be mean and not a ton of room to be nice. So um, remember every time he does a rude gesture, it's because a victim's word have successfully cut into his ego. I mean, uh, it, probably. Nikki said, thank you for doing this. Emily, watching with you makes it a bit easier than watching alone. I, that's why we're doing it here as a community together. We're going to need to watch something more fun another time. Um, but the kids have done fantastic. So thank you. Uh, designing uh, Mag designer McGallan. I, I hope I got that right. I am sure that the members of this jury are having a tremendously difficult time. What they did is so, so difficult. And they saw and heard the things. Secondary trauma is real. And these jurors are going to have to walk through that. And it's going to be difficult for them too.
it's going to be difficult for them too. Kristen Russell, thank you for the super chat. Um, this is ripping my heart out. I am grateful and blessed that I am now breast cancer free, but my fear and pain is nothing compared to what these people live every day. There just isn't enough prayers to help them hug your kids. I mean, and your family members and your grannies. This this ripped through a community. And, and what we've seen is this community saying, we are stronger than you. And the kid who is the um, the baseball player, I'm, I'm also allergic to pineapple. The kid who is the, the baseball player saying, we are stronger was so incredibly powerful. We are stronger than this. We are stronger together and we are together. And I will say everything that here that has happened shouldn't have happened and is horrific. When you look at the silver lining and you look at the helpers, you see that these victims have, this community has been able to come together and support each other. And that again is just showing the better side of humanity versus the act of, of what Daryl Brooks did. There are some victims of crime that have had no one in their life go through it. It's why there are support groups um, and why there need to be support groups because nobody can quite understand what's taken from you when you survive, um, when you survive as a victim of crime. So with all of that, I am going, we're just about four hours. To, this morning's been a little wild. I did not expect an hour long court shutdown. Um, I did expect all of the tears. I knew that this was going to be going to be sad. So pineapple allergy squad is representing in the building. Occasionally, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you true, true stories. I will not reach beyond my allergies for tomatoes, cucumbers, or other things that go on salad. But occasionally I absolutely will for a, for a pina colada. I absolutely will. We're going to need a, oh, tomorrow's podcast is full fuckery, full tilt housewives fuckery in tomorrow's podcast. So there's that. Um, so we have the stream for this afternoon populated. If you want to go over and chat in there, you can. So 273, Emily, you said 273. <laughs> we are, I mean, we're just walking through it. We're not going to be Mr. Beast, the most subscribed to man on the platform. And that's okay. That's okay. We like doing this here. Um, Lila, we're going to, as we move to the afternoon stream, I'm just letting you know, you guys, I am wrapping and we are moving to the afternoon stream um, with this. I will be there just right before 1 15 um as the court starts up but leela said emily thank you for giving me a safe space here to watch justice i am a trafficking survivor and while i never got justice i find it healing to watch those victims be heard and able to share their stories leela i'm sorry that you did not get justice and i hope that you could heal what is what has happened to you um without that because sometimes even having a court verdict doesn't feel like enough. So thank you for sharing that with the chat. Um, so for everybody, a huge, huge hug to all of you. Take a breath, get some food. I'm going to go get some food. We will be back here in just about a half an hour. That stream is already populated. So this stream will, will push over to that and we will, we will be together for the afternoon and see what happens. Hopefully there's no more big quarter interruptions. And, um, yeah, you guys hugs to the law nerds. I am so incredibly honored to be a part of this community. I really, really am. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being Law Nerds. I'll see you in the afternoon stream. Cheers. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.